We are live. We are live. We are live. I, I put a lot of time, guys, by the way, into getting this thing ready. Uh, we are, I'm trying, I'm trying to do this thing right. You know what I'm saying? I want to do this thing with you guys. Have a great time. We got the Cubs and Padres, the final game of the series. Cubs, we wish we're going for a sweep and said are going for a series win. I'm going to do a quick mic check. Looks like I'm coming in nice and hot. Say what's up. I see Steven in the comments. What's up, Steven? I see Andrew. Go Cubs, go. I see SML texting stories saying hi. Say what's up. Hey, listen, before we get started, before we cue in the game here, I do want to go ahead and say what a performance from Ben Brown last night. And if you missed the interview, we're going to go ahead and play it for you right now Urgent to see for sure. What has been the focal point in those sides with, when it comes to the fastball? Yeah, I think it's just understanding that the top of the zone is open again. Uh, started a little bit with it last year and kind of getting back to what I do best, but just dropping the ball, finding focal, finding focal points as well has been huge. I mean, we made jokes about it, but every single thing I do has a focal point or some sort of little cue or something like that. So. How big of these last two hours have been for you just since the debut, everything that went with that, just to have these back to back right after that to kind of yeah. reassure yourself that your stuff plays? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's almost like tonight was the final affirmation that I needed. Just, you know, the game at Wrigley was freezing cold, and I don't know if anyone wants to hit in that temperature. So that little, you know, thing in your head's telling you that you got to go out and do it again. But, you know, having a really good lineup to face and going through it, you know, one or two times. and Making some new pitches and making adjustments too. You know, I lost a little bit of fuel in the third and fourth inning, but you know, thankfully we had a little bit of a long inning that was able to kind of lock into what I needed to lock in. So, how big was the Cody slow from center? Oh, that's sick. Yeah, <laughs> that's super cool. You know, um, he's he's awesome. You know, he's a gold lover, right? Yeah, definitely gold lover. MVP, he does it all. So. Um, so that was really that was really awesome, and that, that picked that picks me up big time, especially when you know the game can speak up on you a lot right there in that situation with a runner on second base, and potentially on third base. So when you guys are coming off a tough loss like last mm -hmm. night, like what's the mindset for you coming into the game? You know, also it being your first big league start, like how did you lock yourself in coming into today? Oh, man, I um I, I had some funny conversation with my wife about it, like man. Like, Feels like the playoffs because every game up here feels so big and it feels like when you're watching TV as a kid like all right well this happened this game and the next next guy's up and you know there's I felt pretty uh, pretty peaceful though I was you know just kind of you know I got a really good night's sleep I had a good breakfast I wasn't super nervous and uh, just testament to you know to God and just giving me that strength and courage just to go out there and be myself and to play free so for sure guys I mean I loved <laughs> I love that post game interview because you just hear, I mean, you can just see he's so in awe of being in the majors right now, right? Where it's like, hey, how about that play from Cody? He's like, oh, that was sick. <laughs> you know, what a real interview. And I got to meet him at spring training. Very good kid. Um, here's a little breakdown of the 77 pitches that he did throw last night. And then we're going to get to the lineup for the Cubs. 50 of the 77 fastballs, 26 the knuckle curve. He threw one changeup. Only four hard hit balls, and he had a great stat line four and two thirds, three hits, five strikeouts, only one walk. The guy looked great. I mean, what can you say? So, Ben Brown doing his thing, and now the Cubs are going for a series win. Let's take a look at the lineup here. We got Ian Happ leading off, Seiya Suzuki swinging the hot bat, Cody Bellinger at third, Christopher Morrell at third base. Today with Kyle Hendricks on the mound was very interesting for me to see. Um, and then you've got 
Bush over at first base, Dansby Swanson at shortstop, Mike Talkman in left field, Miguel Amaya at catcher, and Miles Masterboni is going to be playing second base. Very interesting as well. You, you see the day off for Nico. We're going to go ahead and cue into the audio as well in this game go there, don't you? You got one so that we can hear Boog and JD doing their thing. You guys should be able to hear both. Um, what's up, Andrew Harris? He's going to fit in just fine. Stoked for his future with us. Guys, do me a favor. Can you hear it okay? Can you hear me okay? Is the volume too loud on the game, or are we good? Give me a, a quick little mic confirmation that we're good. We're about to see the very first pitch. Hope you're watching at home. That's how we're doing this thing. And Ian Happ leading it off for us with Dylan Cease on the mound. Got about... 13, 14 of you here in the room. Looking forward to seeing more join as we are going. Go ahead and share this with a friend. Who's a Cubs fan? Friend of yours. Go ahead and share it with them. And by the way, after this first inning, we're going to go ahead and talk about how you can win this Miguel Montero autograph ball right here. Underway you see that? It's a little bright. There we go. And kind of an odd start time. Here it is, Miguel Montero. Excited to give that way in Hap. Fouls the first one back. Thank you, SML. Texting. Another foul. If you're wondering, by the way, what constitutes a day game versus a night game, obviously 340 is going to be a day game, but the cutoff point is five. Anything. Hmm. That's good to know. I, I never knew five that. Five o'clock is, is the, day game, the cutoff. Five or later is a night game. I always just figured like three o'clock. That's for a statistical purpose. Yeah. Slider down and in. Dylan Cease. Interesting so story. Like first couple starts, game, not so bad. Four and two thirds innings, correct. his first time out, six innings, two runs, the second Ball time out. Strikes, his hat. Craig Stands says Morell at third for Hendricks. Delivers. Bold strategy, Cotton. In the <laughs> Let's see if it seats. plays out. Where is that? Yeah, Craig, I've, we've talked uh, about it, right? Christopher Morell has the question and, uh, marks at third base. He had a decent day, though, yesterday, and you wonder if they're just trying to build on that. Especially with Kyle Hendricks on the mound, but body I gotta imagine a short leash. What are they called, a Two strike pitch here uh, to Hap. Oh, swing and a miss. Change oh, yeah. Cease gets Hap. That was nasty. That was nasty. Well, he goes soft here to get the Ian curveball. I mean, that's a hard curveball. That's a curveball. That looks like a changeup. Change of speed from the 97 mile an hour heater. JD calls it a curveball. Okay. I haven't watched a whole lot of Dylan Cease recently, so this will be some I guess that's news for me to 97 on the fastball at the top. So that, that's down. He's real sharp downer action. Been one of the top strikeout pitchers in all baseball over the last three years. Yeah, in his I mean, that looks like a curveball, 83 miles an hour. But J.D. was calling the other one, the other curveball, and it's at 88. That does it. Spencer Strider, number two, and then Jesus Lazardo Or a curveball. And that is Another curveball at the top of the zone right there. Strike. If there's one area that say a Suzuki Why improved game upon day not working? as the year went on last year, it was hitting breaking balls in the zone. Let's one and two. Do this. It's off the outside edge. Getting low there. We're gonna change up our game day. Suzuki sees it off to an you. excellent start. Hitting 326. Sees working here. quickly and fires. And yeah, that's too high. Kind of an awkward delivery that he has, isn't it? Kind of short arm mm -hmm. and delivery. There's a little funk going Make on there. A little bit smaller so we can see everything. Suzuki with a there we go. Okay. three hit game last night. He's had a couple bit. of those already this season. Oh, right. So he's been hitting the ball in the air a bunch. 3 2. And that is in there. No argument. Got him looking. All right. Cease. Back to back Coming strikeouts out, strikes. for Dylan Cease. And there's two away. little slider right in the middle of the strike zone. Go Cubbies indeed, Stephen Dubois. Dubois, Dubois. So Cody Bellinger not good with runners, from the with no runners Petco. on. And a swing and a miss. Let's see if I can show you this really I'm quick. assuming those are Dodger related. Yeah, that would be my guess. I did a little bit of research oh, here before the game. I've got yeah, some stats to show you throughout this thing. That slider is funky. That, that he yeah, could throw it effectively as high as he does. And Check this out. Music. Runners in scoring position, he's got a 1,056 OPS. Bases empty, 
375 OPS so far this ball season. On the strike, they play Bellinger Not to pull great on the infield. With runners. At least the left side goes. Not on with bases empty. And that one foul back. 97 with that heater. And also, Cone the left-handed pitchers. The line I mean, Cody was first, great against, against lefties last year, but he was Wade also pretty good against righties, to that too. Sort of and right and now, pull. he's not doing much against righties. Ball in the dirt. We got a 2-2 count now. Yusano she said it right the second time. Let's see, what did I say the second time? I think it was Dubois, like the French way, Stephen. Dubois. Seen so far this year, thumbs up, he thumbs down. Chasing. All right, Cody. Kind of two outs, getting groove. something going here. Let's see. Cease has got the first two via the strikeout. Fly ball. Fly ball, I'm right field. Anywhere. Tatis shading his eyes and coming on makes a two-handed catch. Okay. Bellinger retired. The Cubs go one, two, three. Kyle Hendricks so will take them out. Let's go ahead and talk about the giveaway right now for the Miguel Montero. Autograph baseball. I I am so excited about this, guys. I spent, like I said, I've spent a lot of time here, uh, getting this show ready for you and getting ready to have some fun during this game. But um, here we go. This is what we're doing for the Miguel Montero giveaway. Number one, you have to subscribe to our list. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Number two, you need to like this video. We got 15 people in the chat. 11 of you have liked. So go ahead and make sure that you. Finish up the the liking part of this if you haven't already. And number three, we're going to do some trivia. Answer the most trivia questions correctly today. So we're going to start it right away with this first trivia question. So number one, subscribe to our list. Number two, like the video. Number three, answer the most trivia questions. And really quickly, just so you can see, uh, to subscribe to our list, all you're going to do, and you should see it right now, up on your screen, you're going to setupman.net. You're going to scroll down after being on this home page, and right there, subscribe to our list. First name, at least first and last would be good. And one more time, I'll show you that one more time. Setupman.net. Scroll down, subscribe, and that's going to be the third thing. Okay, so the very first question that we have for you is as such. Question one. It's two parts. I'm coming out of the gate smoking with you guys. Here we go. Question one. Who did Miguel Montero hit the Grand Slam off of? It, ah, crap. I have a typo. It says 2015. It was supposed to be 2016. That should say 2016. Sorry, I'm a one-man band over here. I'm not going to get everything right. Who did Miguel Montero hit the Grand Slam off of in the 2016 NLCS? And number two, what was the count? The game is back on. I'm going to turn the audio back on here. Second time through the order. Hendricks. First that's where he needs to live all day long. Right there. All right. Giving you guys First another 10 seconds or so here. So far this year. I should have had a little countdown. Who did Miguel yeah, Montero hit coming. the Grand Slam off of in the 2015, 2016 NLCS? Behind the plate and what was Maya the to work. count? Put it, Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Who did he hit it off of and what was the count? I'm giving you guys another 10 seconds here. Bogart Hendricks with the changeup makes it one and two. You really want to see the command. Came up, the Red Sox That's really been the issue with... Hendricks bunch. this year, command. I'm not worried about the stuff, it's the command. All right, five, four, Kim's three, two, one. They flip the two of them. And Bogarts I'm gonna wait second. a second for seeing who has answers. Next I wanna see what the answers inside. are. Again, person to that, answer the most number the of questions back to the base runner. correctly Plus liking the video, plus subscribing to our list is going to get this Miguel Montero is hit on the ground, ball. Back to the sign ball. Kyle Great Fields. sign. Xander and Bogarts. Fastball in on the hands. Located Comes great in that at bat. Blue Cross, right? Blue We've got the defense. fastball painted on the outside corner, Lush then a change up for strike two, and then he goes today. inside with the fastball well, running. In Love to see that. All right, we got WJ saying 3-2 count Hello, and Blanton. Josue Cisnero says Joe B. Can't recall the pitcher, but it was a full count. Brutal question, yeah. Brutal question indeed. All right, fouled at the plate. 
by Fernando Tatis Jr. Versatility, but of all the Guys, I'm sorry to say that only one person it is the got one of the questions the most right the most to start this. Hendrick Steele. So we're giving because I can't I can't uh, let's see I'm looking at the the answers here all right I guess I'll give two people the answer for Blanton Josue Cisnero says Blanton and then WJ says Blanton as well so both of you got the pitcher right but guys it was an uh, O and fight. two count Outside. not a full count it was an O was, and uh, two count a little bit in this series and that is the answer Joe Blanton on an 0 and 2 hanging cutter slash slider. You can go look it up. One and two to Fernando Tatis Jr. The is short I love these swings so here. far. It throws him out. Jammed on the inside for Mr. Bogarts and then reaching on a look like a changeup. Christian Morrell, who's uh, no doubt had his issues down there at third base, but a real pretty play there. Off to a good start here. Lead double and Bellinger, the strong throw to third. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm surprised we didn't get more people with the O2. I remember that so vividly. I was at a Scottsdale bar, a Cubs bar, and I was just holding my breath on that at bat from Miguel Montero back in 2016. That was fun. That was fun. O2 hanging slider. Can't recall the pitcher says DJ away, but it was a full count. Three people guessed full count. It was 0-2. That too, he'll throw that front hip two seamer to the lefty, start it in, try to run it back to the inside. So corner. I'm not worried. Uh, Put in the comments right now, are contact. you worried about Hendricks? The hands, off the end of the bat. Let me know. Are you worried about Hendricks? Totals. And tell me why. Last year, that is why I'm not worried. Pitchers, right there. That ball started at his elbow and ended up in the middle of the plate, velocity. but I don't like that it ended up in the middle so of the plate. I feel like the right now, Hendricks, ELA his issue how is coming. He did it exactly the way you just said by generating soft contact. Steven says the thought was great and not against Kershaw. Through. Another ground ball, right, right to Dansby. Dansby. One, two, three. Here we go. And First inning. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. We're going to mute the, the game again, one, but two, I am going to keep it here. And we're going to talk about Kyle Hendricks um, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Because, again, this is why I'm not terribly concerned about him. Is that he has. Let's see. Do I have this up here? We're going to come back to Kyle Hendricks. I know I have the graphics somewhere. I need to upload it. Let's talk about Dylan Cease for a second because he is on the mound for the Padres. And then we'll come back to the Kyle Hendricks thing. Again, guys, I'm a one-man band, so I'm going to do my best to give you everything accurately. But this is my first live stream. Give me a little bit of love. Give me a little bit of, a little bit of grace. We're going to have some fun, but it's not going to be perfect. Dylan Cease, here's a little graphic for you here. Now, I know you guys aren't going to be able to see my, my cursor, but I want you to focus on the right-hand side of the screen here. Zoom in if you can. In fact, I'll just go ahead and, and zoom in for you just to make it a little bit bigger for you right now. 2022 was Dylan Cease's best year. 2023 was not so hot. 2024 is off to a decent start. Notice the fastball usage and the fastball miles per hour and then notice the slider usage and the slider miles per hour in 2022 the slider was his most used pitch and it was 42.9 percent of the time 87.4 miles an hour which jd called it earlier a curveball but i'm pretty sure that was the slider then it dropped off 1.1 miles an hour in 2023, and he used it a lot less. About 5% less, 4.5% four, less. Game is back on. We got Christopher Morrell at the plate. I'm going to put the ten zip audio Something's back on. Gotta give. And then need to cut off the, jam. the fastball also dropped off Roll about 1.2 oh, yeah, miles an hour, jam, yeah. and he started Roll using it more in 2020 
2022, 2023, I should say. Now it's kind of back to where it was before. The fastball and the slider, the exact same usage, and the miles per hour are more in line with the way that it was in 2022. Come on. Oh, man, Morell is just smoking the ball. Hung that 108 miles an hour. Come on. Another good Give the guy a roll. Hit the ball hard, but All right. Uh, Merrill, so anyway, Dylan Cease, he's Last looking to me like down. the pitcher of 2022. 2023, I think, was a little bit of a fluke. Maybe he's dealing with something. Maybe he had a little bit of a nagging injury. I'm not quite sure. But what I do know is that the first couple starts here seem to be more in line with the 2022 off, version where Michael he had a 2.2 ERA. Yeah, that home run no, last thank night. No, the bases thank you. Loaded the grand slam uh, we'll talk about Kyle Hendricks on the next one. I'm going to go ahead and feet. find that graphic and bring it up for you. Michael you Bush know, ever hit a ball that far. takes uh, that. Looks like the slider player. outside and high. 2-0. I do like a tumbling pass. Um, down the line. Yep. He's another year older, says WJ. Hendricks has got this, says Stephen Dubois. And then would you Stephen Dunn, no, yeah. I'm not. Well, he faced like two of the best teams like the uh, against the Dodgers. There were some misplays. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good good point. Uh, the Dodgers and, and the Rangers are a, a great hitting team, team. <laughs> but that's also a problem, right? Like, <laughs> downstairs. you saw Justin Steele that, shut down the Rangers. In junior high school, that one we did. You saw... Somersaults, I always went sideways. Wicks do a decent enough job against the Rangers. And then Bush for the Dodgers, base, right? I mean, with this team you had Shota and Monaga shut him down. So good pitching should bat. shut down Bush a good offense, but it was out. just, it was a command thing. And That's what it was. Wants it at the plate. That is something Cease has always done. He walks the people. All right. So the one out walk yeah, well, now, he, you know, he, Dan's be up. A, a traditional power pitcher, and then he's not pitching to contact. He's trying to generate swing and miss. He does get a lot of strikeouts. So normally, you, know, you can live with a few more walks graphic. when you've got a guy who strikes out as many as he does. Yep. Dansby batting 270. He's he's having a good season so far. Tommy ah, that's short. Backing up not him goes do to it. second for one. Return to first. Safe. Yeah, yeah. He beat it out. Dansby nice. Beat it out. Way to beat that thing out, Dansby. Okay, so two outs, one on, or yeah, two outs, man on first now. And normally you see an infielder retreat like that, and you think he's in trouble. He starts backpedaling, and he. Right. He did backpedal and ultimately found I a hop he could found handle, my it Hendrix him double play. If he was able to graphic charge here, that ball and I'm show his ground, this during the commercial break. Very eye-opening. Nice hustle, and Dansby. Here is By the way, if you're joining me and you're wanting to see just like crazy reactions, to the sorry, that's not me. We're going to have some Ball fun talking baseball. But the way I see it is, would you watch a game with someone screaming in your living room? Probably not. So I'm not going to scream. I mean, I might get excited if someone hits a home run, but I'm going to be myself. That's all I can be. That's really remarkable. Hope you guys can accept that. I'm going to try it again with a little more energy. That's remarkable. Go Cubs go, says KO Sports Talk. Welcome in if you're wow. not, or if you're just joining us, you've missed the first that one back. So inning. It's two, the it's the top of the second, no score. Oh, yeah, I did with him. Yeah. And you also <laughs> saw, <laughs> missed the it's Miguel Montero giveaway now, details, so I'll go into that into again in a second too. here if you missed it. He was not in on the Palatine Pounder. No, no, he was no. out. They make yeah. shirts. He didn't want to wear them. No. <laughs> didn't want to draw attention. I'll tell you a himself. funny story about Mike Talkman. It's our job. As you to hear JD and Boo saying so that he was him, out on the Palatine Pounder. What's wrong with Captain Full Count? He's like, I already have a nickname. You can only have one nickname. I said, but you were out on the nickname. He's like, well, I'm in on it now. Oh, he is. He's in. And I guess most of his teammates call him Pounder of the Pounder. Pounder. Yeah. Okay, now he's in. Did he go? Oh. oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Can we get, can we get another look at that? Cease pitches around the walk for midway. No, nope, apparently we can't. All right, let's meet this puppy and let's show you this Kyle Hendricks goodness here. All right, Kyle Hendricks, take a look at this. We have 2023 on the left hand side, 2024 on the right hand side. This is from Baseball Savant. Once again, I'm going to make this bigger for you just so you can see 
it's red. Red is a good thing. If you if you're not familiar with baseball savant, red is a good thing. You want red because that means that you're in the top percentile of pitchers for that specific category. So in 2023, average exit velocity was 85.2. That was the 98th percentile. Chase percentage, 33.9% of batters chased pitches, which was the 94th percentile. He had the 95th percentile lowest walk rate. The barrel rate was 78th. The hard hit rate was 92%. The ground ball rate was 75%. Lots and lots of red. You like seeing that. In 2024, lots and lots of not red. You do not have red on you. If we were to watch a British movie. The expected ERA is not much better than the actual ERA. Um, the average exit velocity is still decent. You've got kind of this beige red coming on at 63% for the average exit velocities in the 63rd percentile. And then the hard hit rate also in the 64th percentile. That is the two top categories. Everything else, not so hot. He's walking twice as many batters. He's getting barreled up twice two times as often ground ball rate is about the same but apparently more people are getting ground balls this year so this all just tells me that it's it's a command issue that's all it is kyle hendricks is dealing with some command issues and he needs to get that figured out and let's hope that game three here against the padres is where he does that one two three on three ground so in the first coming back on camera here we've uh, got side, Machado putting the ball on the ground then Profar and then Kim well, that's something that's, uh, four five for and six and interesting that Nico ball, isn't playing in the infield percent. interesting that Morel is playing third base we're gonna see if that ends up in for doing something for the Cubs this game looking to do. I mean no he's looking to hit it when Hendricks is on the mound I kind of just expect a whole bunch of his seventh among your best defense in the runs. infield so Craig Council with O2 as Craig Brindle uh, says a Hell bold move caught 89 running in on Machado that was nasty and Kyle gets Machado. gets his first strikeout gets the first out a lot of strikes very aggressive here in the early going good action on that uh, DJ way says pumped to see Mastro at second base one, today so four up four down for Kyle CC has so done an excellent job of rotating guys in and out early started. going all right so DJ likes to see Mastro at second base what do you guys say? Are you glad that Nico's getting a day off? Nico is, he's running into some, some tough luck so far. Profar has actually looked pretty good in this series. No, come on. So that right there is Kyle's problem, right? Because he pitches to contact, and even though he has a decent exit velocity, barrel rate, balls are going to find the, the grass. I mean, Profar thinks that he popped that one up foul. A little doinker in the left field. What's up, Matthew? I was wondering, I saw Way, and I was wondering if that was you, Matthew. It's running. I mean, that that two seamer looks good today. Keep the ball low. Keep the ball in the corners. That's his formula. Steven, you know I was excited to see Mastro playing. I know you love your Mastro. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Get that called strike. It's going to be a good day at the ballpark. I've been one of his biggest defenders since middle of last year. I Steven, tell me. Why are you such a big Mastro fan? I know he had a decent second Getting half, but like, you know, he didn't have a Seiya Suzuki second half. Outside. Which, of course, if he had a Seiya Suzuki second half, we would all be a Mastro Rogers fan. But, I mean, eight. he had a couple good games. I think he only hit one home run all last year. year before, I want to know why. I'm, I'm glad you're a fan of a guy that not a lot of people are a fan of. I just want to know why. A lot of Every, everything commanded so far from Kyle looks great. Corners at the knees, the ones that have been season. up have been intentional. Because it's probably like a 90-92 win team. 
horrible luck in one run games. They were just two and twelve in extra inning games. Two and twelve in extra inning games. Two. Change up yeah, they were nine and off the plate in one run game. Bring that thing down a little bit. Baseball. Might be a different result. Yeah, Last season Padres game. were eighty two and eighty. Numbers. Nine and twenty-three in one-run games, that, two and twelve in extra innings. Game. That's and rough. The extra innings, you're, you're looking Even if you're five hundred on that, what do they do wrong? Was it the bullpen? Was it the manager? And yeah, it's playoff team. Happenstance. Yeah, it is. Because you know, one-run games happen a lot of different ways. We always if you're five hundred one one one-run games. games and five hundred in nothing in the fifth inning, and the other team comes back to win that extra game, innings. That I mean, feel like a one-run game, does it? Probably a ninety-win team. Runner goes. And that one dribbled Come second. get it, Morel. No, that's basic. That's a good call. Again, this is the issue. Kyle Hendricks. Maybe exit velocity like 40 miles an hour in both of those. Yeah, exactly, JD. Stephen Dunn says about Master Boney, I just think he's incredibly versatile in the field. I like his bat more than Madrigal's. I like Nicky too, just bigger on Mastro's bat and fielding is close. And it was when everyone was hating hard. Okay. Campusano, that's dirty. Neither of the hits. Are you guys seeing this too? Like th this stuff, is the best it, maybe it's the camera angle too you know the camera angle makes all the difference but this stuff that looks good today did so well 23 there it is lowest exit group, velocity average oh. drive, softly hit. Come on. Oh, man. Wow. around it in to score his profile i mean again that was like maybe 80 miles an hour off the, the bat silencers on the back so huh? 69.9 <laughs> yeah, miles an hour off the bat and that's I love Kyle Hendricks, but this, the way that the game is today, I just don't know how sustainable this kind of pitcher is these days. Sends Profar home and the Padres strike first. That's something the Cubs have been doing. Uh, One nothing. So far this year, the Cubs have had the early lead. Yeah, sorry guys. It looks like it is coming in about 20 seconds later. So if you're able to pause on your side, like 20 seconds, we'll be all synced up. But I'm noticing on that on mine. I've got my YouTube up too, and it looks like looks like there's a little bit of a delay for the YouTube. I mean, everything is on the corners. Everything is low. Everything is in on the hands. From the three hits this the inning have just been area. jokes. It's the Park, same area that produced Mark Teixeira. And he was originally signed to go play college ball at Army. Here go the runners. Third throw down Got him. Third. Got him. Oh. Morel was late getting over. Oh, boy. Kim able to get in. Kim just face plant into Morel. Looks like he was grabbing his forehead or his face. That's a great throw by Amaya. I, that's one thing they I want to see from Amaya this year, throwing out the more move. runners. Wasn't great at it last year. Yeah, I don't know if Christopher kneeled, him, uh, kneeled on him or, or maybe slapped the, the tag on him, got him in the face. We'll get a look at it here. Owie. Ooh. Yeah, he just ran right into his buttocks. Head first into the backside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right in the left cheek. What was that? That was right cheek to left cheek. Right cheek of Kim to left cheek of Morel. Just ever so eh, maybe more of the, so there, the lower there, back. There. Does the left hand ever come off? And is he tagging? No, the left hand doesn't come off. Okay. Yeah, that's a great job by Kim to not let the hand come off. The slow-mo of Kim holding his too. eyes is kind of funny to watch. Great if you're baking, but not so easy not so to much grab stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thank you, 24 of you here watching this game with me. I hope you are enjoying. Um, we're going to ask another trivia question here in a bit with Miguel Montero and the giveaway. We are doing a giveaway. I've got this ball right here. Here we go. As it tries to... There it is. At first and third. Yeah, there we go. 
So Miguel Montero signed baseball. We've got a contest going on. Whoever answers the most questions correctly is going to win. Which is not a big baseball school. This ball. Got better, got bigger. So far. And then Kentucky came in and he had signed. We've got a couple right answers for the first question. I need to start tallying that up too. Uh, Old ground ball, ball, turn it, Mastro, and just gets the run. The run so there score, goes the second run. Started off the inning with a strikeout to Machado, and then everything has just been weakly hit, and they still get two earned runs running. off of this. Maya has been better at framing and throwing than Gomes. So far, it looked pretty good. Tyler Wade now. Wade. I can't say I have paid baseman. that close of attention. I need to look at the numbers, WJ. But I can tell you, last year I know yeah, that really Gomes was better at throwing out runners than Amaya. So if he's worked he's on it and gotten better, pitch. that's he awesome. Knows he's executing pitches. I'm gonna he's start telling up who's got execute. these questions he'll right. Probably end up having a pretty good day. That's a strike. See, that's the, the pitch that Kyle needs to get if he's going to do Merrill, okay in this game. Miles an hour. That's the hardest hit ball this inning. That's crazy. Analyze that, JD. <laughs> I there, no. Know. Well, I, I will say this. this is, we, we say this all the time about pitchers who don't strike a lot of people out. You, you do become susceptible to some misfortune when you're not striking people out. More balls put yeah, in play. Exactly. Uh, more... Likely you are to give up some bad bit, bad, bad luck. Bad, bad, bit, bad luck. You know, the flares and the rollers. But Called that one a strike, but that was further off the plate than the first one. Being an umpire is hard. I actually got my umpiring license when I lived in Colorado, but it was just as a fun news story. For those of you that don't know, I was a sports anchor. I just did it as a news story, but I was not about to go out there and be I've been an leaning a little bit, Boo. No, thank you. Have any of you ever umpired? Merrill does have a you got to know. It's, pretty well. it's tough. It is tough. Kyle's always had one of the better pickoff moves in the league. Quick feet. There goes the runner. Pitch is low. Throw down to second. Oh, jeez. Oh, it through. Right. He swaps it. It's back it up, baby. This is tough. I mean, and Dylan Cease looks sharp early on. Cubs don't have a hit. So a pair of steals in the unit. Two runs feels like a lot right now. So you want to keep it at 2 0. Took, uh, took Miguel a little while to get out of his crouch and unload that throw. Yeah, see, that's. I mean, WJ, I know you might susceptible have seen th some things, but that was always my thought was Maya just doesn't look like he gets well. rid of the ball quick mm -hmm. enough. Matthew Way says agreed unlucky unlucky the batted the, ball the in play. Arm, there we go. Nice change up at the Wade knees and that strikes. is a strikeout so Soft keeps it 2 nothing. We're going to keep it right here to go over question numero dos of our giveaway. So, if you missed it, question number one was, I'm going to put this up here for you. Question number one of our contest was, who did Miguel Montero hit the Grand Slam off of in the 2016, supposed to say 16, not 15, NLCS, and what was the count? It was Joe Blanton on an 0-2 count. Three people got Joe Blanton right, but everyone thought it was a full count. It was an 0-2 count. Uh, question number two, we'll get to here in a second, but just a little recap. Make sure that if you want to participate, that you are subscribed to our list, setupman.net, setupman.net. And you just go to the very bottom of, uh, the, the page and it'll ask you to subscribe to the list like this video and then answer the most trivia questions correctly. Question number two, here we go. Question number two, how many times was Miguel Montero an all-star in his career? And how many times with the Cubs? Another two-part question. I swear I'm not going to ask so many two-part questions. Just going to get the tough ones out of the way for you. So, again, how many times was Miguel Montero an all-star? And how many times with Los Cubbies? Go ahead and answer. Put your answer in the comments. we got 27 of you here. 
Thanks for coming on and watching. Make sure that you're subscribed to our channel as well if you're enjoying this. My name is Kyle Stanley. I am the Setup Man, and I am bringing you all things Cubs all the time. We are going to have Greg Huss on the show next week to talk about some prospects coming up. We're going to have Brendan Miller as well. I'll take the time right now while you guys are here. Brendan Miller is going to do our live stream with us on Friday against the Mariners. Game 1, 835 Central Standard Time. Make sure that you come in for that one as well. Coach but let's go ahead league, and get to the answer to the on question number two. He began as an advanced scout and worked his game is back on. Miguel Amaya is leading off. So how many times was Miguel Montero an all-star and how many times with the Cubs? Met him and he said it was obvious I'm going to wait for a few of you to put answers in when you talk to Flaherty, he said, well, the comments because I don't see any answers yet. And I don't want to put up the answer here until I see some answers. His dad, Ed, is a long two time all star. Coach, I believe both were with the Diamondbacks as Stephen Dunn. Okay. Maine, and he's part of the reason uh, Flaherty developed a Matthew Wakes is three and one. Baseball. Stephen Dubois and three times and twice with the Cubs. Okay. Flaherty, he said just that. He has a really high baseball IQ. His we'll see, we'll see. Obvious, and he's been challenging Flaherty to step up and share his opinion even more because he trusts him so Owen much. 0 2 to Amaya here to yeah, start Ryan off Flaherty the top of the third. Council did not know each other prior to Flaherty Cisneros Josue Cisneros says coach. two no that's high in there no argument I mean from Miguel Amaya the the pitch so clock the thing not the pitch clock the K zone wow, thing Bowling. was full but Flaherty I mean that, that was a little bit high two times with the Diamondbacks the none Royals. with the Cubs says Carl Peterson Braves. okay we're gonna go ahead and, and show the, the answer who has this through. right Sharp player. Hey, we have that Carl with the correct Walter answer. Really Josue also him. with the correct correct and answer. Uh, WJ Walter with the correct answer. And Steven, did you say and a guy that, had that? Let's see, where did Steven go? Two times, both field. with the Diamondbacks. You guys are correct, course, so congratulations. You know, the, the I'm going to go ahead and put those yeah, correct yeah. answers down here. All right, your boy Mastro. Popping up. Just Sorry, Steven. I don't like his swing. I'm just not a big fan of that swing. Flaherty played at every level in the Cubs system except the big leagues. I'm not hating on you, Steven. I'm just saying, like Matt Mervis, I also was not a big fan of Matt Mervis' swing. I do not think Matt Mervis' swing pro will produce in the major so leagues. Super comes across his body, Padres doesn't hit the ball, through the ball. You are taught when you are coming up and hitting that you hit the through the ball. You hit through the ball. Fastball not, missing. Had it you know, keeping that bat in the zone and pretending like there's a second ball behind it, that's that's what you're looking for. But that he has played Mervis, it. not so much, and Mastro, not so much as well. Swing and a miss. One, two, yeah, I mean, Cease looks on, guys. I don't think I've ever seen this a gonna be tough. have as much success with this is gonna be high tough. breaking balls as we're seeing with Cease here today. The one one. And that's in for a strike. Man. That's gonna be a tough one. Ninety-two mile per hour slider. Yep. Ninety-two mile an hour slider? What? Cease ready. Ninety-eight Bounds on the high away. fastball. I mean this is the kind of game that you just have to wear down the starter because he looks sharp. And right now, they're not doing that. This is the 40th pitch coming up in the third inning. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Oh, boy. All right, hey, I'm going to take a quick break as well. So I'll see you guys back here in just a second.
Okay, we're back. You know, this is a uh, this is quite the pace. You you watch a game, right? Just some tough luck. You watch the game and you're like, yeah, we're back on, we're going. But this whole no pitch clock, or sorry, this whole pitch clock and like one and a half minute commercial breaks, I gotta be on my game. I gotta be watching this thing. Bogart's grounded back to Hendricks. Steven says, hey, the Cubs are masters at making subpar pitchers look like Cy Youngs and wearing down the actual good pitchers. And Miles handles the chance. I don't disagree. We did really well against you, Darvish. This Joe Musgrove yesterday. Yeah. Got, got to him in the fifth the inning. Way to be your best self is with your Let's best see. Health. Thinking back here. So you can live purposefully. We live did well against John Gray. Live fully. Who is, I would say, average. Going to the Rockies series, or you're not going to have any Cy Fernando Youngs there. Tatis Jr. Dodgers series. Or Yamamoto and fouling crushed him. Only went five innings, but... He looked good outside of that first inning when the Cubs should have put up at least see if Kyle a couple Hunt runs. Starts to introduce that curveball a little bit here now. That he's dealing with the top of the order for a second time. I mean, the command is so Out good today, guys. It's so good. The shadows are affecting me, Greg. I'm not seeing the ball real well today. I might, I might, I might bunt. I just think that Use your speed. Mm -hmm. the type of pitcher that is successful today on the ground come get charging it. Swanson one handed scoops it up got Goes him that nice is your gold lover right there the mm. Padre dugout waving their hands mm, and mm, mm. putting their hands over their ears as if to say we need to uh, challenge let's this see. one skipper we'll see what the Padres decide to do it was awfully close Let's see, let's see, let's see. Play by Swanson, but the uh, go! Yikes. I think they got him. I don't know. You play can't on. tell from that angle. Play on. Yeah, playing on. Play okay. On. Good time to talk about Dansby. This is impressive. I think this is going to surprise a lot of people if you didn't already know this. To generate contact on the ground. Hey, pop up. Says, I'm gonna pop this Here's the, the second out. Right, after a great play like that from Dansby. Oh, that Andrews. was the third out. We're headed to the fourth. That was quick. I Congress. love that. Well, we're going to keep it here to talk about Dansby for a second. Because Dansby, last year, even though everyone and their mom was like, oh, he's not that good. What a waste of a contract. According to... F War, which is fan graphs. Or if you're not familiar with F War, first of all, F War is fan graphs wins above replacement. B War is baseball reference wins above replacement. According to fan graphs, Dansby Swanson was first on the team in F War. That means he brought the most value to the team. Even though he hit in the 240s and really didn't have a very good offensive season, if we're being completely honest. The glove is so good that he was able to make up for that. And then B-War baseball reference, they had him second behind Nico Horner, who was at a 5.1. That just tells you how good that glove is. Because when you think about his 2023 offensive season, none of us want to see that kind of offensive season again. Maybe the first two months, but after that, it was... I mean, he, he'd tell you the same thing. He, he was not good. Um, and just comparing this year to last year, just so we can take a look. Last year, through the first 11 games, he was at a 356 average, but only an 820 OPS and zero, count them, zero home runs. I think it took him a good like 25 to 30 games to really hit his stride. We're seeing no, yeah, we're you're seeing my my screen here. So let me see if I can detach that. There we go. Now you're seeing Dansby again. Uh, but this year his OPS going into this game eight ninety one. So the OPS is seventy one points higher. I love 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 seeing that. 
even though the average is down Slug. if you remember last Third. year like yeah, he was Italy, he was getting on base all the time, but it was single after plus, single after single, very third, little slug. This year already a five fourteen slug and an eight ninety one OPS. That's solid. That's what we want to keep seeing. Okay. Game is back on. In the game, final two months of the season last year. coming up. Thus far, he has looked quite good. Yeah. Yeah, he's looked very good. Two and one. Gotta get spring training in front of the this guy oh wow. that was the hack sale with a great swing 97 down the kiak uh, let's see steven let's look here one two too many one two threes cubs are master yeah he's got, i'm excited for oh, said uh brett brown yeah. steven dubois Spring but uh ben brown uh he reminds me of carrie wood months. and hater in one package he's got the hater look right it's tall skinny so, long know, hair but he's got the carrie wood fastball and that hook is nasty lot, so yes i'm excited too there. steven oh he hung that Guys really sealed the ball well and having a lot of good swings we'll count get on base here suzuki Get on base, Talent's and then we've got, Dylan Cease. That's, that's pretty let's nasty. see, uh, Stephen Wall also says Dansby is really good, average player, from contributions, but you're not like it's Ryan Sandberg or Mark yeah, Graves. Yeah, look, but the, 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 trend for the, the glove, been it's the glove. Bats, on that's base. why you pay him all that money, it's the glove. No, say uh, the fastball upstairs. No, no, Struck no, no, no. That was ball four. Yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot of that from Suzuki again. Maybe just not seeing the ball really well because this one's way up there. That's yeah, armpit it, high. it's shadow time. At 98 miles per hour, nobody's He's probably that. thinking that's going to end up being a curveball or a slider. Uh, Steven says my dad's side of the family is from Arizona, so when the Cubs got Montero, I was excited because I had been a fan this for a one bit. Driven in the air for towards sure. left center, Merrill is there. He makes the catch. And that, Bellinger Cody, is 0 for 2 now with runners on. The Cubs with are gonna no, I keep on trying to say runners, runs runners on with bases empty. See some walks are going to be part of the process, so you're, you're going to need to do what they have done, Gosh, and that is that changes the whole dynamic make him work of and the fourth down inning. Some bats, Say it doesn't swing at that. You got a runner on. You got Bellinger yeah, coming up. We're all behind him. One swing to tie the game. Sometimes that's the formula for success against starting pitcher who's. On a roll. Christopher put one on the board. Well, this is the guy that popped one with three guys on base last night, Christopher Morell. And that's in there for a strike. What happens though when a pitcher takes control of a ball game early and he's throwing enough strikes early, the tendency is for the throwing enough strikes early, the tendency is for the hitters to get into swing mode. Uh -huh. I would imagine a lot of them are thinking, if I see a fastball anywhere close, I'm hacking because I don't want to deal with that slider. And that's going to lead to some quicker at bats. So Cease has 50 pitches through four innings. So to, to force these elite starters to throw more pitches. I'm pretty sure we have now seen there for 100 plus pitches. If if Morel is out here, I'm pretty sure we have seen three of four innings go one, two, three. Look at Hundy. 100 miles an hour on the fastball. 100 miles an hour from a starting pitcher in the fourth inning. Kind of awkward too. It looked like he. Look Craig like says Morell's about to go to deep. I just want to hit. Right Can someone get a hit? Kick. Christopher last time hit a hanging curveball 108 miles an hour to the warning track. Swim. Oh, 99. Wowza. Padres lead it 2 to nothing. 2-2. Two, two. Cease Here we delivers. Go. 99 fouled back. It seemed like it, it was an inev inevitable. See, that's what I love about Morrell this year. Sox were going to trade C, so the way things that's a pitch. On the last south year he swings through. 99 at his elbows. Not if, swinging through that all day long. Okay, five players I back hope that is sustainable that this year. Still has a couple of years of control before he's a free agent. That really is a 92 a mile an hour slider. Acquisition for the pod. Like what, what is he doing? He just kicked it into another gear. First inning that slider was like 88. went down. Padres started their season over in Korea. Asway says Dylan Cease is just a good pitcher. Yeah, I really do think it last year was a fluke. After they had left. But he flew over on his own to meet the team Ooh. in Korea. Another Haynes slider. That one was 89. Well, when the Padres got right Cease this offseason, I was like, what are they doing? They're going to be like a 500 team. Why are you 
trading for Dylan Cease when you lost you Blake Snell and you, you traded away Soto. But I mean, after this series, like they're pretty, they're pretty decent. Oh, what did Morel do? Did he foul that off his finger? Oh, be okay. He's getting looked at right now. Steven says Morel is becoming ruthless, but too many errors so far. Yeah, he had a good game yesterday. Steven Dunn's too many Stevens in this the chat. So I'm just there. Uh, Jose Quintana trade will always be a nightmare for giving up Cease. Hit hard. Hey, there's an error. There's a base runner. And Morel. Another hard hit ball. Let's see if they show. X of velocity 109. Just reading it was 108 the first time, 109 this pain, time. No doubt. Uh, still managed to hit the ball really hard. It basically hit it through Aslan Kim, the shortstop, at 109 miles per hour. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough play. Slide over and get in front of I know, that. I'm not getting in front of that time. ball. Probably would have been better off playing it on the backhand. So Morel aboard here is Bush. Swing and a miss. I can't wait for Michael Bush to turn on the power. I feel like he's been decent at the plate that? so far. I believe a lot better down. at first base than I would have expected. The scoreboard put hit up, but the official Ooh, score just seven at his face. But so far the power isn't there. Four hundred slugging coming into this game. It was hit hard, but it was seven twenty-five OPS. He's Ball a zero war player, push. according to baseball reference so far this year. A walk his first time. Mm. That seems to be the Lefties downfall of Michael Dylan Bush Jesus so far a is time of it off speed. Against the right than I'm not right. seeing a whole lot of not contact on off speed. He puts up good at bats. Way, but He's got a decent eye, but not a whole hitter. lot of contact on off speed. Ooh. That one if that was frame better, that's a strike. They have caught a break. Two and two instead. Yeah, this one looked like it with the, caught the bottom of the knees. Uh, let's see. Matthew Way says, I was just thinking that about that cease trade back in the day. Yeah. Come on. Get out. Get out of here. Yes. Come on, let's go, Michael Bush. Hey, what did I just say about off speed? That's a hanging off speed pitch, and we have a tie game, y'all. First, first hit of the game is a bomb to tie it. Who's pumped? Who's pumped? Let's hear it in the comments. You talked about the long ball and the fact that lefties had a little more success. Let's go. And righties against Cease. This home run replay is brought to you by Toyota. Bush Toyota. says Stephen uh, Dunn. Chicago Boom, Cubs Justin Martin. What's up, Justin? Yes, says Josue Cisneros with two outs. So that both those so runs are unearned. Both those Bush runs are unearned. Air by Kim. Good teams make you pay for errors. That's what I'm freaking talking about. So the Cubs, who have not really been using the home run ball, at least prior to last night. Stephen Bois says, wasn't it against way to score. Real Madrid? It's been about Matthew Way says, unlocked. And getting on Let's base go. Whoops, proved me wrong, Sato says WJ. Go Bush, go Cubby, says Dubois. Michael Bush SML texting, stories, let's go. Stephen Dubois says, yes. Matt Cozy, Matt Cozy, what's up, man? At first, and uh, that's a good question. So I was told I can use the audio. Yeah. I was, but I can't use the video, Matt. That's what I was told. Yeah. So all seven runs. Maybe I should look into that. Last night and today via the home run. Prior to that, the Cubs were in the bottom. I'm three pretty sure that for audio, we're allowed to use that because I've Four watched one. other. Um, live streams, Last night but I have, and I've Chris seen audio. Jan Gomes also went deep. So, a solo shot. it's a good question, though. Thanks for joining us, Matt. You're, this is Locked On, right? The Matt Cozy from Locked On. I'm a fan. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Line drive. Oh! Wow. Nice play from Bogarts. Bogarts. Grabs that one. 
Uh, I meant Bush of a was about to go deep, you, says Michael Craig Brindle. <laughs> Craig after saying Morrell was going to go deep. Matthew Way says, Matt Cozy, what's up? Let's link up sometime soon. Enjoy the channel. Go Cubs. Yeah, let's do it, Matt. We'd love to have you on. You and Sam, let's get you both on. The audio all helps me sync the stream with my TV, LOL says says WJ. Yes, let's, let's all sync it up. All right, we got a tie game. Both of those runs unearned. Let's just make sure that they did do it that way. Padres, you've got... Where's the bullpen? Where's the pitchers? It's skipping a little bit. Yep, two runs, both unearned. Michael Bush making him pay. Second home run as a Cub. He hit two home runs last year for the Dodgers. Batted 167. The dude has proven that he is now a major league hitter. And, I, I mean, how how excited are all of you for how well he's been playing in the field? Great pick last night. Great diving play to win the game against the Dodgers. I, I've been pleasantly surprised with Michael Bush for sure so far. In fact, now that we're talking about it, let's just go ahead and bring up some stats for him. Michael Bush, so far, uh, the metrics are showing he's do he's got some decent numbers. It's not not a lot. If you're looking at baseball savant, not a lot in the red. Seventy eighth percent barrel rate, seventy fourth percent chase rate, fifty eighth percent tile in the walk rate. And again, slugging is four hundred, but the expected slugging was very encouraging. Expected to be five oh four. So that tells me that he's hitting some balls hard and just getting a little bit unlucky. But you do want to see some of that improve. But hey, he ties the game. Blood homer, this game is tied at two. We go to the bottom of the fourth. And Manny Machado Ooh. pops one up foul. That's a fastball play. right in Take the middle of the look. plate. Focus on Dylan Cease. Mm. Thoughts on the home run? Mm. That's a... All right, now that we have a tie game here, let's have some conversations about what's going on with this Cubs team. So, Kyle Hendricks is on the mound. Ben Brown has been impressive. Javier Assad has been very impressive. Top 10 in ERA in the... Foul back. Foul back. Uh, I have it written down here. Some notes. Javier Assad is to, to do fifth in the NL for ERA for qualifiers at 164. Fifth in the NL. Wicks has looked good enough. You can tell he's going to start going deeper into games here in a little bit. Kyle Hendricks has not looked so good. Not a ton of at-bats, but Machado was... Who, Seven at this point, is the odd man out when Jamison Tyone comes back? And the 0-2. Who do you think? That's a great, great 0-2 pitch from Hendricks. Who do you think is the odd man out guy. You make sure you when it comes to the side. starting rotation when Jamison Tyone comes back? Maybe double up in there. Maybe cut change up away. Oh, Chato's putting up a good at bat. While you, while I wait for the 20 second delay you and for you guys to throw up some comments here, I'm going to read a few say, from. I probably misused that information. No, I would just say that the, when I played, we didn't use. Let's see we here. Have a whole lot of information. Kyle isn't feeling the master uh, love. Oh, right man. Gapper, come on, cut it off. That a boy, Bellinger. Yes, 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 yes. Kyle isn't feeling well the master love. Send the interview right from center. last season. Uh, didn't know you guys interviewed Master. I yeah, must have missed that one. Nice Listen, I mean, you can be a good guy. You can be a good interview. I just don't really. I, I'm just not a huge fan of him in the lineup and him in the field. I, I'm, I, I mean, we're trying to make him like a, a Ben Zobris type, but Ben Zobris was an everyday player, and Mastro, like you know, you want to put him in. For pinch running, for a bunt, for some defensive improvement, 
But still, I mean, he made a pretty big air against the Dodgers the other day. I don't know. I just haven't seen enough to be excited about him. And I think if Patrick Wisdom was healthy, you'd probably see a lot more playing time from Wisdom than you would from Master Boney just because of the one factor, the, the bat. Over time, when you play the same um, guys over and over again, you learn their tendencies. And mm -hmm. Top tier, I'll be there after the game, says Stephen Dunn. Yeah, guys, go check out Locked work. On Cubs. Love them. Love them, love them. That one, and then uh, CHGO. Just to be honest, like Locked On Cubs and CHGO was actually Basically, part of the Matt reason. The Matt, throw, Matt, Matt, if you're still here, I just want you to know swings, you and CHGO are part of the reason that I started this channel was because I got bored last year during the off season and just started watching tons of Cubs content and being a former sports anchor and a huge Cubs fan and a video editor and everything. I was just like, I want to do this. Like, this would be awesome. Just misses inside. I'm a real estate investor full time, but that does well enough for me to be able to do this part time and have some fun with it. So Matthew says Assad first to return to the bullpen. And that's the way I think it feels, but I don't like that. I think that. Javier Assad has been the most consistent outside of Imanaga starter so far. Like, wasn't that the reason that we didn't like David Ross last year was that he was just giving way too much credit to the guys that had gotten him there? Javier Assad has proven that he's a great starter. Al Hendricks has games like this. That's not good. Machado scoring. That's going to be a triple. Get him. Got him. That's what I'm talking about. I can't believe Profar didn't get the third. Never make the first out at third. <laughs> that's huge. Guys, that's huge. With the way that Cease is pitching, he's really had one or two mistakes. Now Profar gets a change up, up in the zone. Hits it all the way to the wall. Bellinger gets there I thought Profar in a hurry. was faster. Unloads. Hits the cutoff, man. Good, strong throw from Master Boney and Morel there. Nailed it. Reply All right, tag. going back to some of the comments here. Quas, I don't know why he hasn't Excellent already been work. option to AAA. Ben Accurate Brown will move to the, the cutoff, bullpen. Man. Strong Craig throw Brindle. from Master Boney. Um, Good tag by Morel. WJ says I saw it. I want to keep Brown. But That's WJ, like, one. are are we so watching the same Pitcher like and a stolen base Assad and a is his has been time. an elite starter ever since August of last year. He's been elite. What was the stat last night? It was oh, that's a beautiful pitch. The old adage is you don't want to make the first or third. Assad out has the base, eighth best ERA. Nobody out. That's, that's since really like twenty. I, I don't want to misquote it, but I heard I heard JD so say far. something last night about like. Javier Saad is in the top 10 of ERA over a certain period of time, and it is a significant period of time. It's, oh, it's about a year and a half or more. Here to that, don't make the yeah. first or third out of third base so much anymore. And is Matt Cozy going to visit Iowa City again? Says Decibel third out Monks. Maybe. First Brown will be a much. starter, says Dubois. Oh, oh man. They're just peppering that right center corner. corner. Just wearing that space out there. Yeah, exactly. Bellinger picks okay, it do it again. Do it again. No, 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 no. Third, and he will dive in. He's got a triple. Now, how big's that play? Carl yeah. says Assad well, has to stay in the rotation. Triple, maybe go. I and that's that's where I was at, Carl. Run. I thought Didn't, uh, based on by the fact that the Cubs were able based to on a few factors, based on Imanaga and being used to this pitching every six days. His, his first couple of starts, I thought that would be a good reason for zone. us to have a six-man rotation, but also the fact that it feels like Ryan only two out of five guys in the rotation I mean, have been going five innings or more. Right so Kyle. wouldn't you want to give the starters more reps? So, Carl, I'm, I'm on the same page as you with that. I think Assad stays in the rotation when Tyone comes back, and we go to a six-man rotation at least for the meantime. In inning number four, and the Padres um, have retaken the lead. You can get that out of your head. I don't know what, here what you're in referring San to, Stephen. CHGO is solid, says Matthew. We'll head to Brown is a starter. CHGO and Locked On Cubs took over my 2023, says Stephen Dunn. Yep. Same. Um, Brown is literally our new carry. Nice throw, Mastro. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Infield comes in. Any chance to give Mastro a little, little love, huh? 
No, that strike. was that was a great throw. Uh, he's not going to the bullpen, and here we go, Hendricks screwing it up. Keep him at 3-2. We really need to keep this a one-run game. Infield is in. Uh, let's see. Matthew says he has the most experience in long relief of anyone on our team. I love him, but Kyle want to see more Brown. Games, four career shutouts. His first Brown was also very good in with ballpark. Luke Little That's coming in as an opener and Brown as the long relief. Just want to point that out. Come get Shot it. To short, Swanson mm -hmm. picks it up and elects to go to first. Or two. And the run comes in to score. Yes, and last it was like a replay. Again. Too many runners on the base for Assad. This, okay. This is a topic I want to talk about. WJ. Um, you have to make this decision exactly in a hurry, right? right? Assad's a base runner. Chopper don't from the dirt and immediately in mind of, okay, big high bounding ball. Chances of throwing him out at You've home. heard everyone say it. Middle. Baseball savant says that Javier Assad should have a mid four ERA. Okay, we're going to keep it here because I want to talk about this. The Padres. I want to talk about this. Twice. We'll head to the fifth. And I want to hear what you guys have to say about this, too. Okay, we're talking about Javier Assad being the escape artist, right? Everyone keeps talking about, like, oh, well, his expected ERA. And I'll just, instead of just talking about it, let's bring it up on Baseball Savant. Javier Assad. My computer's moving a little bit slow. We got so many things open here. Javier Assad. His expected ERA, let me show you this. Let me make sure you guys can see. Baseball stats, there it is. Let's bring that up above game day, and let's make that bigger too. All right, expected stats in 2023 for Javier Assad. Expected ERA was 464, but his ERA was 305. In 2022, his expected ERA was 449. His ERA was 311. Now, let's look at hard hit rate. His average exit velocity, pretty good in the 78th percentile in 2023. Hard hit rate, not so great. Ground ball rate through the roof at 74th percentile here this year. Average extra velocity, 81st percentile. His K rate is up, and his hard hit rate is also solid. His ground ball rate is actually down, but probably because of the fact that he's striking more guys out. When we talk about clutch, right, like a lot of, a lot of the broadcasts that you see from JD and from from Boog, they talk about clutch, and they they don't necessarily believe in it. I I do. I mean, I didn't play major every league major baseball league is different, like JD. Is there something you do every single day? But and he's really big I played on baseball all my life. In and so he said when he you talk about guys being on base, every single day. it changes your mindset at the plate. You have to be it 100% changes your mindset as a hitter so some days and as a pitcher. Really and you only need those when you swings, are on the mound then there's going to be other points and there's no one on base, you like you you're going to be swings. more aggressive. And so he says it's you're important gonna... to only take a limited amount of swings when you feel good Did he go? to save up no, for later in the okay. season when you one might one not. To Everybody's a little bit different, but that's his move. One of the things that's when you talk about a pitcher, and I'm going to actually mute the broadcast right now just so we can really... I, so I can hear myself speaking. think. Um, two and two now to Talkman. When I when I was when I've been a pitcher, and I got no one on, I'm throwing fastballs. I'm I'm living with fastballs. When I get guys on, I'm living with different pitches. I'm throwing more sliders. I'm trying to hit the corners a little bit more. I'm trying to get guys jammed. This is the kind of thing that happens when you are a pitcher. Mike Talkman, hey, fair ball, get on second. We got a leadoff double. Okay, yeah, he's he's there. Jeez, that was closer than it should have been. I want to hear in the comments. I love me some Assad. Three to four relief innings, good for it, says Stephen Dubois. 
Dang, now I got to tune in to the Spurs too. Massage base runners don't turn into runs. Yep, Craig. Um, it just is a mindset shift. You don't have to call it clutch. You don't have to call it whatever. Um, I mean, clutch is really the only word, but if you want to call it clutch, you can. But to me, it's just it's just a different mindset. You just you change your approach, right? I'm going to go 80 down the highway, but if there's traffic, I'm going to have to hit some brakes so that I don't hit any cars. It's the same thing as a pitcher. I can go right down the middle of the plate, or I can go ahead and start living on the corners. I see game day is about one pitch ahead of us, and now that we are seeing some pitches, I'm going to go ahead and change that. Game day. Let's make that small. Oh, wrong one. Let's hear it in the comments. What do you think? Do you think that he's gotten lucky, or do you think he just knows how to pitch with runners on? Spring of Mike Talkman says Stephen Dunn. Tell me what you think. Ah, strikeout from Amaya. You need to get that runner over to third. I don't like that swing either because that shows me he's trying to pull the ball the way that he was doing that. Do you think that Javier Saad knows how to pitch with runners on and changes his approach or is just getting lucky? I don't think 19 starts. I mean, when you've had that much success in 19 starts under a three ERA, I don't think that's luck. And span it out over three years, right? You can have 19 starts in one year and like things are just feeling really good and you're, and you're, you're rolling with that, right? But we're talking about 19 starts with breaks, with years in between. Part of it is lucky because his stuff isn't elite. It's not elite, but it's pretty dang good. I don't like that swing. I don't like that choice. Mastro swings at a ball in the dirt. Listen, if he hits a home run right here, I'll become a Mastro fan. How about that, Stephen Dunn? If Miles Mastroboni hits a home run right here, I will become a Over Miles Mastroboni fan. Swan. I'm going to turn the audio back on. C steals. Uh. Stephen Dubois, no, Stephen Dunn says if you compare Assad's stats to bullpen really and starting, he is insanely he better as a starter. Yeah, dude is a starter, bona fide. Yes, Stephen, his, it, now it's actually pretty close. It's not like one is a four and a half ERA and the other one's a 230. They're both hovering around three. Nice job, Master, getting a little bit of a piece of that curveball. Master Boney last year in the first half. It's kind of on the up down shuttle. Yeah. Here you go, Steven. He hit 169. He got some more 169 consistent playing in the first time, half. especially down the stretch. And we saw that guy that could hit the four-seamer up. He hit 309 in the second yeah, half. Yeah. All right, 309. Yeah, that's that's good. No, that in the year left it. field and Profar. I mean, 309 in the second half second. is solid. I'll give you that. Um. Steven Bois, Amaya, what the heck? I think it's both need a little lick sometimes, but I actually think the guy is good. Yeah. Matt Wade says the guy I saw during the WBC is not lucky. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good point. Hard to call this many occurrences luck, says Kyle DeVille. Good name, Kyle, and good point. That could have been a strike. One nothing to half. Craig Prindell says, not to mention how good he looked in the WBC. Assad knows how to pitch. Fastball in. Come on, Ian. First home the run of the year. No this would be a great time. Stephen Bois says he needs to do something because I keep forgetting he's on our team. Sat in the 96 uh, to 98 range. I think, are you talking about Master Boney? Realize, guys, you're on about a 20-second delay, really so I, I just don't I don't always yeah, know what you're referring Capusato. to if you're not using names. Able to grab it. All right, 3-0. You giving Ian Hap the green light? Had him throwing three change-ups so far this year. Yes or no, green light to Ian Hap. You know, he's flipping up a little leafus kind of pitch. A little lob. Yeah. I haven't seen any of that here today. It's been the power game, fastball slider. Hard curve. Taken all the way. 
all the way, which I'm okay with. Hasn't shown to have the power this year quite yet. Stick around in this half inning because we are going to ask the third question for Miguel Montero and giveaway. Foul back. 98 at the letters. Stephen Dubois Andre said he wanted a 3-0 green light from half. WJ said he wanted the same. Full count. Here we go. Three, two. And inside. Ball, Don't try four. to frame so that. That was Suzuki way inside. Way to the plate. Let's send it downstairs at Taylor. Perfect time for our Prevagen memorable moment. This day, 2022, is when Seiya hit his first major league homer. And it was a 412 foot shot of Freddie Peralta. He would go on to be named the National League Player of the Week, posting an OPS north of 1,000. And if you remember that season, he was off to a scorching hot. The league adjusted. It took some time to adjust back, but Seiya Suzuki back in nice form. Another homer right here would be pretty nice. Yes, yes. it would, Taylor. Taylor coming on our show at the end of April. Out to the mound. In fact, since I've got some of you here, you know, Taylor is oh, she's nice in the dugout. She's developing quick. relationships with all of the players. Like, you know, she's not going to come on to the show and, and give us her expert opinion on what the Cubs need to do. Mm -hmm. She's going to be more about the personality. So, so I want to know, and I'll, I'll ask her these questions while we've got you here. What would you like me to ask Taylor McGregor about Cubs and personalities on the team? Put it in the comments. What would you like me to ask Taylor McGregor? when she's on the show in regards to anything the about these Cubs a, players in the dugout, the in center field. That's right. before the games, that. personality, anything at all. Back to Do you want to know about some quirks, about some superstitions clips. that maybe aren't talked about a lot? What would you like to know when I have her on the show? Say a Suzuki. Yeah, do Here's not call that. what it used that. to look like. 90, now that the shadows are yeah, back behind Cease, you would imagine Seiya wouldn't be chasing anything. Taylor's he probably just didn't see on that last at bat, that fastball that he swung at his eyes. Like he probably that. didn't see what the spin was on it. No! Cease has it, and underhands to Cronenworth. Suzuki retired. Up straight two. Leave a couple. All right. So while you guys are answering that and throwing some comments in there, it is time to ask our third question for the Miguel Montero giveaway. And I'm going to just remind you, because some of you have not been here for the entire time. Check it out. This is the rules. you got to subscribe to our list. Go to setupman.net, setupman.net. Scroll down to the bottom. It'll ask you to subscribe. You're going to like this video. We got 25 people in here. 22 have liked. Thank you very much, guys. And you're going to answer the most trivia questions correctly to give you an update. So far, Josue is leading the way with three points. He, in our first two questions, they were two-parters, so you could earn two points on each. Josue has three points. And then you've got Stephen Dunn and Carl Peterson with two points each. So the... Third question, out of five questions, make sure you are staying with us this whole time so you get all of the questions. Name one team Montero played for after the Cubs. One team that Miguel Montero played with after his time with the Cubs. Honestly, I don't even remember him playing after the Cubs. I thought he was DFA'd, and then his career was done. But guess what? Looked it up. Got a couple. Some of you are going to cheat right now. You got to live with that. If you're wanting to cheat, if you're wanting to look up on MLB.com, that's your that's your thing. I, I would love to see you guys not use the internet for this one and just go off of memory. Uh, while you're answering those, 85 pitches for Cease now, so pitch count looking better. Yep, that definitely helped out. Thank you for pointing that out, Carl. Uh, Stephen Dunn says, Hap has a great eye, and that is why he should have been leading off in 2023. 100% agree. Kyle DeVille would like to see Assad pitch to induce the ground balls at times. Feels like he's 100% strikeout all the time. Um, is that a product of how he throws, or can he tailor pitches to induce? I, 
I actually don't know if I necessarily agree with that, Kyle. I mean, he's been getting more strikeouts this year, but I don't think he's going out there and saying, like, oh, I need to get the strikeout, you know? Um, but, you know, can he do that? Absolutely, he can. But I, I, don't, I guess I don't see it the same way. Um, WJ, ask her if she sees a difference today. between Ross and Council. Well, Bold question. Strikes. Bold question. Yeah. I'm going to screenshot that one. Oh, two. All right. Um, it's 0 2 right now to Wade. You want to see Hendricks get this batter with the top of the order coming out for sure. Um, does Craig Council's tone change behind closed doors? That's Purdue's a great question from Matthew. Patrick Wisdom. Has he learned or she learned any Japanese? First Bush great it, play by Bush. Gathers it up, sprints over to first base. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, WJ says, I have no idea. KO Sports Talk says Diamondbacks. Two, um, I think it was Diamondbacks, if I'm not mistaken, says KO Sports. Uh, National says Craig Brindle. WJ says Tigers. Josue Cisneros says Blue Jays. Stephen Dubois, everybody gave the answer earlier. Diamondbacks. Bogarts, um, it back to DJ to Matthew coming. Wade says not going to cheat to answer, but look, and I'm not, and I'm not surprised to see the clubs he joined. Um, Stephen Dubois, it's the Diamondbacks. Bogarts, Stephen Dunn, yeah, my immediate you, thought was is a like one last run in Arizona. Ha ha. To not cheat. Told me um, Xander Bogarts don't remember Stephen Bois, so now I'm on the channel, and now TSR Sports for those first two. That's awesome. Carl Peterson, Blue Jays. I like Craig's batting stance back in the day. Hey, one one. Good guesses, everyone. But the answer. Am I still? Do you still see the question? Yes, you still see the question. The answer again. Name one team that Montero played for. After the Cubs, not besides the Cubs, after the Cubs. So the Diamondbacks would not be one. It's the Blue Jays and the Nationals. The Blue Jays and the Nationals. And I believe we had two people say Blue Jays. Josue just killing it with the Blue Jays. And then someone else said, I want to say Nationals. Craig says Nationals. Great job. And Carl also said Blue Jays. So great job. I'm going to record both. All three of you got the win on that one. Come get it, come get it, come get it. There's that arm. There's that arm. Let's go. Nice play, Christopher. That's a great play, Christopher. And that nice charge play it. earlier in the series on Tatis. Okay. This time reacts. Tricky little backhand. Once he snares it, bullet. He's gonna get plenty on the throw, and this time on the money to get See, his hand. See, that's these are the kind of plays. In baseball. That but Christopher, I think, is going to continue right to show inside. he has the arm, he has the athleticism, <laughs> he has to get rid of it fast. It's those routine plays that you're just like, ugh. He's got too much time to think. They don't like the attack. All right, so winners on question three was Josue once again. Josue, you are killing it. Carl, get to Master it. Boy grass, scoops it up, and All right. One, two, three, one, two, three from Kyle. Padres. I'm going to take another quick we'll break. We'll see six, you guys back Cody right Bellinger after the commercial.
sorry, sixth inning over a half, half run. a run. Looks good. Sounds like it's going to make you some money, and that is good news if cash is your thing because baseball. All right, guys, coming back, we are in the top of the six. Cubs are down 4-2. to two. This is the kind of games that I'm expecting to see from Kyle Hendricks this year. 3-4 to four earned runs through 5 or 6 and keeping them in the game. It's not ideal. You want to see a guy that shuts the team down. In all likelihood, be Cease's last oh. inning. That is driven Come out on. towards right center, but Merrill mm. is there. That just didn't carry. Thought he got it initially. Maybe down towards the end of the bat a little bit. He must have got jammed. Pitch count off the bat looked good off, climb off of Cody. For Dylan Cease, um, and now you just want to see him Morrell. keep Morrell. the team in in the game. Reached and it an looks error. like this will be Cease's last inning. His last time up Eight, hard hit ball right at Hassan Kim. It's the top of the six. Got Morrell and then Bush. Oof, big swing Morrell's right there. there. Um, Yuki Matsui, the looking at the comments here. Nice throwing. play by Morrell. Atta boy Morrell. Gold glove for Morrell, says Carl. I'm assuming that if you got that question right, you're cheating. Uh, Go Cubs says Cis Josue Cisneros. There's that. There's that. Ephus. <laughs> that Ephus. That thing was crazy. That was 63 miles an hour. Put a, a big hump kind in of it, waste, bitch. Matthew says, Kyle, didn't you do the analysis of Morel's throwing arm position? I sure did. Yeah, didn't sleep very well. Only if you got beat with that. Fastball in for a strike. One two, right there. Pulled a couple of those off the edge. Stephen Dubois says, yeah, people cheating left and right. Like, how do you get enjoyment? Okay. That okay. That you we don't have to call people out. We're that's having some fun that here. We're having there. some fun. If people want to cheat, that's up to them. But that's inside. I mean, Blue Jays and Nationals, that was the answer. Uh, Stephen Dunn says, I looked it like up a, afterwards like and zero at bats with the Nationals, maybe 100 with the Jays. Ain't no way. <laughs> Gone as Cease. I am Boy, ready for Mullen Cease to be out of this game. Another one of those high sliders. Yeah, a lot of high sliders. JD is not wrong. Michael Bush now. Bush a two run homer his last time up. Cubs trail 4 2. Oof. Bush. 98 right down the middle. Fouls it away. Time now for how far did it travel? Driven by the Bob Locurcio Auto Group. JD? Uh, I'm going to go 374. Wow. 405. 405. Mm. That was a bomb. I'm going to qualify for the showcase. Michael for that Bush guess. says, how dare you? Zero, you sure about that, says Craig Brindle. It's time for seats to take a break. Oh, you're and still let fine. Others you play. Absolutely. You over it really is. Yeah. You're out of luck, right? Yeah. All right. And Time to do something again, Michael Bush. It's 0-2. It was two strikes on the last one. Oh, that's a yeah, great what, take. Is yeah, that sure. is a great take. Now, if he gets Michael here, they might run him back out there in the second. I hope not. Cease delivers. Good eye. That one got through everybody. Jonathan Parra behind the plate today. This is what his third. I believe so. I was just it's interesting you mentioned him because I was going to say uh, does not have a lot of experience at the big league level, but I think he's been fine back there today. Yes. If you don't notice Generally, an umpire, the means they're doing guys a good job. Are better ball strike umpires than the older guys. All right, oh two to three two. I like it. Yeah, this is see this is the kind of the bat that I'm saying, it, and this is what the Cubs have been doing so stinking well. I don't know if you guys saw. I did a. Video level. about all these at bats that they're going deep in. Their second, I want to say, second. Let me, ready. Let me quote Here it comes. correctly. And Bush Get out of play. Pops it up. Gosh. Foul. And Wade makes the catch for out number three. Bummer. Midway in the sixth to the Padres. Okay, a couple things while we go to break. Uh, I'll come back to that offensive stat, but I do want to make sure that you guys know. 
Uh, what just happened there? Oh, I see what happened. Let me let me get back to this and do this the right way. There we go. And now you should be able to see it. Uh, just a reminder that on Friday, we're going to have the one and only Brendan Miller from the CHGO podcast. They call him the Pitch Doctor, and he's going to be checking in with us, watching and doing another live stream of the Mariners game. The good news about that Mariners series as we kind of look ahead and look forward to that series, a few things. The Mariners are not playing well. They have a 4-8 and eight record. Is there a chance that the Cubs could get one of the top starters for the Mariners if they keep playing poorly? I sure hope so. Uh, four and eight record. You probably are going to see Jordan Wicks on Friday, Shota Imanaga on Saturday, and Javier Assad on Sunday would be my assumption. But none of the pitchers have been announced. The Mariners, not only are they not playing well from a record perspective, four and eight, they are not scoring any runs. 26th in average, 211, 27th in OPS at 606, and 27th in runs at three runs per game. The great thing as well, you're not going to see Logan Gilbert. You're not going to see George Kirby, two very young and exciting pitchers for the Mariners. Probably we'll see Luis Castillo in the finale, maybe Castillo versus Assad, as we continue this really rough road trip on the West Coast. But also, right after that, the Diamondbacks, who are also not playing super well, 5-7, and seven. They're fourth in the MLB in runs, but they're 15th in ERA. So that's why you're seeing the Diamondbacks not doing so hot lately. Um, as we get back to the game here, I am going to go ahead and go back to my thought on some of the offense. Let me remove that. And, and we're back. Jim Deshaies, only two have been curveballs. Yeah, he threw one right. Machado last at bat. The Cubs. Drilled uh -oh. in the air, right field, down the line, and gone. Cronenworth will touch them all. And it's now 5-2. How many pitches does Kyle have? One of the things that Kyle did so well last year relative to the two previous seasons was keep the ball in the ballpark, but the home run has been... A bit of an issue for him here in the early going. That's the fourth one he's allowed. Yeah, 76. I mean, with a fairly taxed bullpen. Worth does a real good job. Watches the foots down. He just stays in. Ah, stays long gosh, through the zone. Not liking where this Hendricks game is going. Up and lifts it out of here. And now the pitch to Machado. A foul. Well, let's go back to the offense because this has been a very exciting year so far Kyle for the Cubs offense. That's only been done what they're so not doing so Carter, well with stolen in. bases. That was like ben their number one the thing last year that they were always lifting. doing well. So that's been really interesting that they're not stealing any bases. They're kind of average right now in the average department, 264. That's now, ninth in the MLB. The they're tenth in the MLB in home runs. But everything else is fourth fifth second and then there's one other category they're seventh best in strikeouts which is also a vast improvement that you love to see but how about this fourth in ops at 795 second in runs at 71 which by the way the dodgers are first with 79 and they played in three more games let me repeat that cubs have 71 runs Dodgers have 79, but they've played three more games. That two -year stretch where Likely that the Cubs would be first sharp. in runs had they played in as many games as the Dodgers. Also Lefties likely really that the Braves would be first because the Cubs are second in runs per game at 6.4, while the Braves are first at 6.9. As a basic Machado. And out this might get ugly. Field, Machado with his second hit of the game. Stay to the end, even if it's ugly. We still got some stuff for Miguel Montero for the giveaway. We got two more questions on that, so keep on sticking with us. I don't want to see this get past five and two. Sooner or later, Machado is going to heat up. Uh, they're also fourth in walks, which I think that's where I was getting at. All these professional at bats that you're seeing, I call it the Fukudome effect. Remember that 2008? It was like 
as soon as Fukudome was on the team and almost every at bat was a three ball count, suddenly every guy on the team started doing the same thing. And you're seeing that this year with the Cubs and other players. How about Nico Horner? Something like a 7% walk rate last year, now already at 17%. You're seeing Morrell not walk as much, but he's been selective in the zone, which I really like. His chase rate has gone down. And then they're fifth in slugging at 431. This is all coming into the game. Profar up, he's two for two, and you've got nobody out. Machado at first. Let's see if you guys have been saying anything about the offense. Um, what's Hendricks' ERA now? That's a great question. Let's scroll down. WJ is asking that. No, he didn't. Right field. No, he didn't. That one is God dang it. So Profar will touch him all. It's not good, guys. Are we sure we want Kyle Hendricks and in this rotation? Two. You'd rather see Kyle Hendricks go out there every five days than Javier Assad. Tell me that's my face. Tell me that to my face that you would rather see Kyle Hendricks, five innings, nine hits, seven earned runs, 12.08 ERA through three starts, go out there every five days than Javier Assad. Take a freaking hike if that's your answer. No offense. Kyle is going to end up with the ugly numbers. His third consecutive start. Hendricks out of the game. This pitching change brought to you by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. WJ, uh, you, I actually looked into this. Um, thank you for bringing this up. WJ says they're probably not stealing many bases because of the council change. Uh, so the Brewers, the last three years, have been in the top 11 in stolen bases in all of Major League Baseball. So it, it's, I don't think it's a Craig Council thing. They've got the speed. They've got Bellinger. they got Horner. They've got Swanson. Hap can steal a base every once in a while. Suzuki hasn't always picked the best times. Morell is also not a great base runner, but he's got speed. Master Boney, Madrigals, kind of whatever. Uh, yes. What is he, Hendrick's ERA now? 12.08. Three games. At least he finally pitched five innings. But, I mean, we just had a 4-2 to two game. Now we have a 7-2 to two game. Are we sure Kyle isn't hurt again, says Stephen Dunn? He might need to be moved to the bullpen, a.k.a. Smiley. Yeah. We may hear Hendricks is on the IL after this game. This is insanity right now, literal insanity. Well, that's not too bad. Oh, my goodness, guys. When I saw Hendricks was slated for this game, I am not going to lie. I was kind of thinking to myself, did I pick a good game to do my first live stream? The way he started off, I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Not liking it right now. Not liking this. Looks like Daniel Palencia is coming in. He pitched the last three innings against the Dodgers the other day, which was huge for the Cubs to be able to save the bullpen. You're probably going to be asked the same thing right now, Daniel. Just go the last three-ish innings and save the pen. Julian Merriweather going on the I.L. And fouls one away. A bit of an adjustment for the Padre hitters here after dealing with Kyle. Now, the high octane stuff that you'll see from Palencia as that one goes up at 97 Seven miles two. per hour. My goodness. I'll just they got to out of hand through. fast. A rough afternoon at the ballpark. That got out of hand is that a fast. Thing? I remember going to bed at night thinking about how did that happen? I, I thought I was in control of the game, was pitching yeah. pretty well, and it just kind of gets away from you. Hmm. Right Interesting. Yeah, Kyle doesn't look very happy. Lots of game left, says Matthew Way. 
Glad you're optimistic. You know, the other day on a video, I said I'm a realist. Actually, the thing I was asking is, reali is a realistic and optimistic Cubs fan. I'm optimistic. I wanted Guy Kyle to do well. I'm a realist right now oh, that, 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 you know, like, that part Cubs have. I remember the Texas Rangers would have like Charlie. Uh, Hunt three at bats left to score five runs against a really firepower. But I never pen. saw any it's gonna be tough, studies man. or it's gonna information be really that would no, say that. One following. Uh, I mean, I understand the logic ladder of it. Yeah. Best base dealer be last season to was Horner because he led off to for most of the season. When you yeah. It's a, actually, a, a finesse guy with I, power I don't know one day to the next, what the numbers are, but Talkman so. ended up yeah, being the guy who strikes. led off the most. I'm pretty sure. And I'm not convinced, you know, that it makes a big difference in a situation like I this. Think, I just, I, I think situationally, A, Horner has not been on base much this year, so there's that. B, He's batted further down in the lineup, which just typically means you're going to have less opportunities to get on base without someone in front of you. On the ground is short. Swanson takes it in and throws him out. So you, I mean, I would still expect to see Nico at the end of the year with 30 plus stolen bases. Is he going to have 40 plus like he did last year? I don't think so, but. That's mainly because he's just not had many opportunities, and I don't see him having a ton Jackson of opportunities Merrill like he did last Merrill year. Has knocked in a run Jackson with a ground ball. Stole have the Monday, hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Dunn says, all I'm saying is Padres came back from 8 nothing, so I believe in the comeback. 20 years old, and this gets taken over as their Jeez, everyday center field. by the good offenses, says WJ. We're not coming back from this. We just don't have it. Fathers are not a good offense. I mean, they're Brewers have Jackson. Matthew, they're, they're pretty the good. We're just calling up Jackson. Let's holiday. Let's bring up some it's stats. The Jacksonian in era in Major League Baseball. Indeed, it is. Take a look here. I'm going to bring up something Merrill on the Padres. This is Jackson Holiday making his big league debut as the starting second baseman. Yeah, how about that for the Orioles? Jackson Holiday. That's exciting Sox. for him. And he is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Okay. Considered by many to be the top prospect in all of baseball. Mm -hmm. Matt Holiday, son. All right. Here we are. Team batting stats. Son, Average Padres Ethan, are tenth. Who is a junior in high school and still walks runs. Oklahoma. And a lot of people think that Ethan will be the first overall pick in the draft. For runs, the Next Padres year. are third, right behind the Cubs. OPS. And this is all without Juan Soto, by the way. Be like the Mannings. That's right. OPS, the Padres oh, are 11. Is that one foul. So, depending on how you define success, really runs is the only thing that should matter and runs per game. Pretty intense eye black. But yeah, no doubt. From a, sort of a OPS and average perspective, type. they're towards the top third. And from a runs perspective, like they're in the top in three. Of now. course, they've played 14 games where a lot of teams have played 11 and 12. So Merrill there's that as well. Space. This is where games start to feel long, to right? It was a close game. It was moving along. But now you got like the bullpen coming in. I don't like the stickers. After Kyle gives up, a, yeah, what was that? A three spot? God, that f that felt like five. Did that not feel like five? Am I the only one that just well, irrationally foul, thinks that three equals five? Morel, he does the double, right? Yeah, he first. does. He stole that look from Willie Adamas, but he said that Willie Adamas. <laughs> Stephen Dubois, his buddies, I stand by that. We can't that. come back. Went and watched the hey, you're still here. Let's, let's, let's have some fun with it. Here to go Adds a strike, yeah. I was doing that game on TV. I came walking out, and Christopher's waiting there. 
will score the, the second the most family. runs per game this season. What this says Stephen Dunn? Pitch inside. He didn't have to throw that, or if Amaya didn't have to come across his Here body to catch that ball, corner. that's a strike. You see Amaya set up away, has to reach back across the hook. 98 on the paint. See how much movement Not is called. an umpire. You, subconsciously, you go ball. The only saving Three, grace right now is that two. Dylan Cease is going to be out of this game. Man at first, two down. It's 7 2. That's a strike. And that one on the outside. Corner. Good job, Palencia. And Palencia able he's to He's looked good Tyler so far. Wade. First We're couple outings, seven. he's looked good. I've been encouraged. He's got that splitter this year. It's been good to see. All right. Uh, while we are on a commercial break, I do want to let everyone know that in the description. Oh, what's from that? That's what they wanted. In the description in the YouTube video right now, if you are watching, just go to your description and you will see a 15% discount link to Avia shirts. And you'll see it right now on my screen. Uh, we have a 15% off Avia shirts discount the entire season. Thank you, Joe from obvious shirts for doing this all you have to do is click on the link in the description make sure you click on that link that specific link is very important and then you're going to use at the checkout the code the setup man 15 all lowercase the setup man 15 while you're here what's your favorite obvious shirt if you own an obvious shirt what is your very favorite one put it in the comments i want to know joe is a good friend of the show he's going to come on we're going to have him as a guest at some point during the season as well. Uh, would love to know what your favorite shirt is. And we also have a competition going on. If you missed that, all you have to do is go check out the video that I did with Joe back. Oh, uh, it was right before spring training. So you're talking basically like February 12th-ish, right around there. Go check out the show that I did with Joe. And we are in that one. We talk about a contest that we're doing that's going to go till may 31st the best idea for an obvious shirt for this year is going to be not only printed and you're going to get it but there's going to be a few other opportunities to win some some cash prizes and some other prizes from joe so make sure you go check that out on that video of course after this game when the cubs come back i'm i'm flipping the switch we're coming back steven dubois sorry I feel it. The lefty Yuki Matsui. Or maybe I'm just being optimistic. The pitching change brought to you by Lakeside. Yuki Matsui. Seven Man games. Matsui. 142 game ERA. Already. And so far, so good for the rookie left hander. Not striking out many. Japan. 8%. An outstanding career. If there you go. Base hit. Steven Wah. We're, base starting We're starting the comeback. We're starting the comeback. The new left fielder. Did anyone else have the feeling yesterday when Rosario hit that solo home run to make it 5-1 that it was all going to happen again? Be honest. When Cronenworth hit that home run the other night, I was like, great job, Assad. Then there was that, like, thing in the back of my mind of, like, ooh. 39 didn't saves for Matsui last we're, year in Japan still and a 157 runs. ERA. Last night, though, I was like, oh, my. Listen, at five, eight, again, are we going through this again? Pounds. Let's go, Garrett Cooper. He's 28 years old. Pinch hitting for Talkman. Cooper drives that one to center. Oh, back man. He's there to make the catch. It didn't yeah, sound good off that. the bat, but that thing carried. Hundred and seven miles hundred point seven miles an hour off the bat to win the opener of this series. Let's see if the Cubs have Honestly, a as soon as he hit that, I thought routine fly ball to center. JD, I am here for late inning magic. Oh On the boy. ground is short. Oh Kim boy. to Bogarts to Cronenberg. Six, 
That's, I mean, it's seven to two. You're not gonna steal bases, but that's my concern of us not stealing bases so far this year is innings like that in close games. Get the leadoff runner on. Sunday baseball cards take. Six. Oops. Close that out. Get the leadoff runner on, and before you know it, double play and all of the momentum is killed. In a 7-2 game, you're not going to see Dansby Swanson steal second base off of a lefty. It's just not going to happen. But if that was a 2-2 two two game, if this was a 3-2 two game, I still don't think Dansby Swanson is stealing second based on how we've seen this team working this year, and that's where I would like to see them steal bases. Oh, man. All right, let's, let's check out some of these comments. Drop the drawing, got mine in. Lisa was right was my favorite shirt. I love that one too, yeah. Lisa's been following us on uh, on Twitter. She's famous. Matt Cozy synced up uh, his TV with Odyssey. The score, maybe try broadcasting the radio call on Friday. Okay. Could try that. Palencia is rising up the circle of trust. Yes, he is. I feel for my guy, Hendricks. What's up, Rob German? Hey, Jake and Rob making some appearances. Time to wear the Rally Cat Boys. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But that was what looked like a promising start to the inning that didn't do diddly squat. Hey, let's go ahead and ask our fourth question of the Miguel Montero giveaway. For those of you that are just now joining us, Sorry, it might be a little bit too late for you to win the Miguel Montero giveaway, but we have asked three questions already, and Josue Cisneros is still in the lead. He's got four, followed by a few of you with two points. Question four, Miguel Montero was designated for assignment in 2017 after bashing this pitcher in the media. Who did Miguel Montero bash to the media and it was on a day that he gave up seven stolen bases in four innings. I believe I'm quoting that correctly. 2017, seven stolen bases in four innings. Montero went on to a post-game conference and said, I can't really do much because my pitcher isn't giving me any chance to throw out runners. That got him DFA'd the next day. The next day. And as many of you know, he went to the Blue Jays. And then right after that, four games with the Nationals the next year. I, According to Stephen Dunn, didn't even get an at-bat. Carl Peterson says Jake Arrieta. Seven stolen bases. Got to be John Lester, says Stephen Dunn. A great, that's a great guess. It's a very good guess. Remember that one time that Lester stepped off and was actually able to throw to first base and it like shocked everyone? That's such a weird thing. Like I get the yips, but I also just figured at some point you would see John Lester figure out how to throw to first base. Game is back on. I'll put the audio on after, but looks like they came back on late because – uh, Bogarts did reach base. It looks like a walk. How did anyone else see this walk? Because it just came back for me right now. That was strange. Um, I wish Quas would talk smack, says Rob German. Sounds like Lester would be the culprit. Idea. Uh, no idea, honestly, says Matthew Wade. All right. We've got a few answers. So Carl says Jake Arietta, Steven says John Lester, Matthew says John Lester, Bad Anderson, it's Arietta, I remember that. What's up, Bad Anderson? Welcome into the broadcast. And there's what was going on right there. Tatis just stepping out. Was he trying to call time? How about when he threw his glove with the ball to first? That was pretty awesome. Do you remember when the ball got caught in his glove? Yes. Yeah, Steven, that was pretty awesome. All right. The answer is 
Miguel Montero bash Jake Arietta. Yes. Figgle and Bad Anderson and Carl Peterson. You got that one right. We've got one more question left after this, so make sure that you stick around in these last few innings here as we ask the last question to give away this Miguel Montero ball, right? Oh, let me make sure you see. I'm not on camera right now. Here it is, Miguel Montero, our autograph giveaway. I'll be sending this out to whoever wins that. And Josue, I don't I don't think I saw an answer from you. You are in the lead. Don't give up the don't give up the lead, brother. Uh, looks like after back-to-back -back walks here, Tommy Hadovy is coming out. Turn the audio back on. Saturday, April 20th, the Cubs battle the Marlins. First pitch, 120. First 10,000. Right. Early arriving fans receive a Rick So, deal. let's see. Ivy, Question please, number four blanket. goes cool. to Cubs Carl. Carl Peterson just tied Josue. Look out, Josue. Carl's in the lead with you. I mean, not as much as I like to. I don't know who Figgle is, sweater, but ah, right. uh, well, Josue well, stepped well, away. Darn. All, yeah. That's okay. We got one more question, and there's an opportunity for bonus points. Bonus points. You're going to have a chance there, Bad Anderson. Next year, they'll be. All right. Score update. We've again, got the, Carl. Uh, Benji, the song and Josue <laughs> in first with four <laughs> points each. Years. That would be eight years. Yeah, eight and years then Stephen so, Dunn at two. Yeah. Uh, and little then little a lot of you with one point. <laughs> oh, turn! No! That's so weak. Bogart's you could tell he's trying to do that, too. To score Cronenworth with his second run bat at end of the game, and the Padres lead at 8 2. Off the bat, you're thinking double play, and then as soon as they show the fielders, you're like, oh, he was trying to do that. Yeah. Kept Not easy to do to get on top of a high fastball like that, especially one as quick as Palencia. Bummer, guys. Really wish we had a better game to watch together. It's the high Friday will be the one. In the left. Mariners aren't scoring hardly at all. Cubs are going to have Jordan Wicks on the mound. And, and I think Friday will go a lot better. From first to third. Tough way to start this road trip, but at least they didn't get swept. If you lose that it's first game, here. eight Nobody nothing. Out, that first and third. Sorry, if you lose that first game after being up eight nothing, and then get swept, that hurts. That would have hurt real bad. Once you have some trouble, the pitch comp. Coming out. All right, Stephen Dubois says I'm out, guys. Going to go watch my Spurs lose by 60. <laughs> hey, you picked your poison, right? It was good hanging out with you, Stephen. You have a good night, man. When is Jose Quas coming in to pitch, says Carl Peterson. I mean, at this point, just put him in, right? Like, why not? Now lead it eight this game not as painful as Monday. 100% agree with that. Yeah, Jose. Real Anytime hard time like you lose, but you lose like this, you're just kind of like, okay, it happened. But when you lose after being up eight nothing, yikes. Jake says I'm confident for the Mariners series. Their offense is struggling. Yeah, Jake, I know you joined us a little bit late. That's um, and just strike. for those of you that have. Join us a little bit late. We are going to be doing another live broadcast on Friday, this time with my friend and a friend of the show with the CHGO podcast, Brendan Miller, the pitch doctor. He's going to be coming on um, the California series. You know, we figured two West Coast, or a West Coast trip, and you've got developing for him the Mariners that you're playing, right? And we're following up with the Padres. And then after that, the Diamondbacks might as well give you West Coast boys for a West Coast play. trip. Brendan yes, is in did he go? Yes, he did. the San Diego Stop area. I'm in Fresno, California, up north. So we're on the West Coast. That's going to start nice super late on Friday, place, yeah. but I hope you'll join us. It's going to be a fun one. I think Jake's got it right. I think we're going to be coming out on top on that one. Jose Azokar. Machado strikes out. This is where you're looking for moral victories, right? 
If Daniel Palencia gets out of here just allowing one run, that's a moral victory after walking the first two guys. The graph man himself says Jake. Yep, yeah, sure is. Jake, I know you're a big CHGO fan. Mention next stop on this trip is Seattle. It's Figgle, I don't know your your legs. real name, but San Diego, I'm glad you're gonna Seattle be home for that one. And Arizona. That's a strike. That might have been so the we'll splitter. A, a pretty good idea about so if, in case you guys missed it, West we did a um, I did a Rockies. video with Lance Brzdowski with Marquee. Looking at the Padres. And Lance, you know, he's he is oh. like a genius when it comes to everything baseball. On the ground, yes. through the right side, that's a base hit. Tatis comes in to score. From like Jake, you called the second, Brendan the graph man. Lance is definitely up there as a graph man as well. Uh, but he talked about all the Cubs pitchers throwing splitters, and Daniel Palencia was one of them. My yeah, question back to him was, you know, for a guy a that had struggled with his control, was it smart to add another pitch? And, you know, so today. you can go check out what he said about that. Uh, we posted that last week, good. so go they check it out on the YouTube channel. Some different looks out there in the bullpen. But let's see, you've got... Oh, that one's gonna Popped up right side, Master Boney. You've got Palencia, Smiley, Shota Minaga, Hector Neris, and Mark Leiter Jr. all throwing splitters. Jose Quas. Hey, Jose Quas is warming up in the bullpen. Moral victories, guys. We're in the mode of moral victories. If Jose Quas comes in and can throw up a zero, we're feeling a lot better about him. Maybe. I don't know. And yeah, now Luis Campusano. Rob German says, what is Jed going to do about this bullpen? Can't blame the coach right now. Rob, we got some veterans like CJ Edwards in the minors waiting to get called up. What position player are we putting in next inning? Yeah, seriously. I, is, what's the rule? Is it, I think it's eight runs. Steven, uh, sorry, Bad Anderson. Do we know? I'd have to look it up. <laughs> Twitter's going to have a meltdown. Steven, I don't know if Twitter is going to have a meltdown because we're down big. If we were up by one or ten, I think Twitter would have a meltdown. Meltdown. But I think because we're down big, you're going to see Twitter just be a little bit chill about this. I think it was Eric but yeah, I'm pretty sure the position player it has to be eight runs. Yeah. That he get on top of the plate like that. I'm wondering how close Scalzo Jr. is to the bigs. And who said um, Jake? Yeah, Jake said you know Edwards calling up from the minors. Is that the answer though? Right? Do we want a guy who has pretty much peaked as a pitcher and last year had a mid three ERA? I don't think that's the answer. Jose Quas makes me think of Felix Heredia, says Carl Peterson. Foul back. Cubs legend Holy Jose Quas says last Jake. Peter at 98. Yeah, I just don't know that Carl Edwards Jr. is the answer. I think getting healthy Andre is the answer. Open, Losing Merriweather. Can we talk about that for a second? Losing Merriweather was a huge blow. That was... I don't, I don't know how we come back from that one unless you see Tyone and Steele get healthy. If you see Tyone and Steele get healthy, here's what happens. Jameis, okay, so one through five. You got Steele, Tyone, Imanaga, Wicks. Yes, he did. Swing get a ball in the dirt. He went. Go down there. Why aren't we asking? Looks like he went. Wicks, then either Ben Brown or by, I mean, again, like by the time everyone's healthy, could we even be talking about Cade Horton? I think Cade Horton is throwing in his first game either tonight or tomorrow. I, if we can, if we can salvage Kyle Hendricks or if he can just say, hey guys, like I'm hurting the team. How about Gary Cooper in left field? Kyle Hendricks is that kind of guy, too, right? Like, 
when he sees the writing on the wall, I don't think he's going to be like, yeah, I want to stay in this on this team, even though Ben Brown and Javier Assad and Cade Horton are all pitching better than me. But let's assume for a second that Hendricks gets gets something figured out. Now he's the fifth starter. Okay, well let's play that game for a second. Javier Assad is now your swing man. Ben Brown is probably a sixth or seventh inning guy, right? Then, and I I actually have this written down. Then you've got Lighter in the seventh. Maybe if it's, you know, a righty heavy portion of the lineup, then you have Ben Brown come in in the seventh, maybe Lighter in the sixth, switch him up a little bit. I really want to see Luke Little in the eighth. I'd like to see Adbert Alzali pitch like he did last night all year long. That cement mixer slider is not working. But that sharp slider, that 89-mile-an-hour slider that has late break, that one's working. So if Adbert figures it out and you can have lighter, little, and Alzali in the 7th, 8th, and ninth, plus guys like Ben Brown, Palencia, and some mixture of Neris and Smiley, I feel a lot better about this bullpen, especially knowing that Assad can be a swing man, and let's say Jordan Wicks goes out there and throws four shutout innings, but throws 90 pitches, and then you have Assad come in and throw in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth innings, shutting them down. I like that bullpen a lot better. Now, would I also like to go and trade for Emmanuel Classe? 100%. I want to trade for Emmanuel Classe. The Mariners are struggling. They've got some guys in the bullpen. Uh, there's a number of different teams that are probably going to have opportunities. I don't think that the Pirates are sustaining this 9-3 and or 9-2 and start wherever they're at. So there's going to be some opportunities for some bullpen guys. But the Guardians, just by the way, have gotten off to a pretty good start. So if they're contenders, they're not getting rid of Emmanuel Classe. How happy are we that we didn't get Shane Bieber, by the way? That would have been miserable. Give up top prospects and guy gives you one or two starts and then he's out for the year. Ugh, that would have been miserable. All right, let's see what some of you are saying about the bullpen. Day? I did not. Yeah. I would rather see Quas give up five runs so we can dump him. <laughs> Naylor Brothers, they play for the Good point, Guardians. Matthew, for sure. Bo and Josh. Um, they uh, each hit a home run in the same inning today. That's, that's a good point. Just coming up with solutions, day. says Jake. I love that. Are there any good replacements, honestly, says Matthew. I don't think Tyone is going to be good, which will put more pressure on the bullpen. He was good in the second half. Was he an ace? No, but we didn't sign him to be yeah, an ace. No, he was pretty good in the second half. They're best friends. Um, don't think Tyone is going to be over. Restoring our starting pitching core is essential, and that will help replenish the bullpen, says Matthew Wade. On the ground at first, yep. Cronenworth. Get over there. Underhands and Peralta gets over. Let's sign Bowen Bauer for the minimum. Get out. First name get out of here with that. Josh is the older one. You don't have to leave the chat. Josh I'm just saying get out of here no with that one. idea. So it's not going to happen. And Everyone and their from. mom wants Trevor Bauer for some reason. Don't want it. Don't need it. Need the arm? Yes. Need the drama? Need the, the attitude? The I'm a Miles changed man. man. Drafted by the A's then, last as soon as who, who signed? Michael Lorenzen to signed to for like... Space. Three million or something like that, and all Trevor today. Bauer retweets is LOL to that. He's not a changed guy. You don't you don't change because of being kicked out of something. You change because you want to. Trevor Bauer is going to come with all sorts of drama. Ian Happ lifts it in the air, left center. Good so Lord. Makes the catch. One swing of the bat is all we have to show for today with a Michael Bush home run. Folks, explore ivyshop.com for the latest. Kyle Chicago DeVille Cubs says, I want to see little clothes. Be sure not to miss out on I was, I rivals. mean, when you shop talk about a big shock from that run loss that, that we had, wearing. it was yeah, not the giving up, eight, yeah. giving up an 8 0 like lead. It was Luke Little giving up a home run and solid contact. It's the first time that I've seen him give up solid contact so far. Could not believe that. And to 
Xander Bogarts, who OPS going into at bat was in the you have a rock to pull on That was surprising. Suit? Yeah, I Jeez. bought one with uh, my signing bonus when I first really? got drafted by the Yankees. Um, Chris Petrick Jesus. says Hendricks well, should be moved bottom, to mop up long point. relief I mean, to finish the, the season the and the career as a Cub. As then a thank you, bye oh, bye. Well, but, um, I, I can't say I disagree. Yeah, I had. To, I got Brad I says when our starters get healthy, we will have okay. many options for that the pen. I agree. Ryan Williams, what's up? My man, Ryan. We gotta get. We would have some fun doing these together. So two deep down on strikes. What would you think about you and I getting a run? Not a great game, huh, Ryan? Uh, yeah, what about Cade? Yeah, that uh, you might have missed me saying that. I said we might be talking about Cade Horton by the time everyone's healthy. And man, I mean, okay, so or, let, let's let's talk about this for a second. This would be fun. Everyone wants to talk about Cade Horton as a starter. And in the beginning of the year, let's be honest, we were kind of like, hey, Ben Brown is probably going to be a bullpen guy. What if we reverse that and we say that Ben Brown is now a starter? He's proven he can go out there, throw five innings of one run or shutout ball. And then Cade Horton comes in and is pumping 98-99 with that dirty hook in the eighth or the ninth inning. What if Cade Horton ends up being the closer by the end of the year? Or an eighth inning setup guy? And that's the weapon that he is. No one's talked about that. But we all kind of assumed that Ben Brown was going to be the guy that was going to be maybe that opportunity more like a sixth or seventh inning guy out of the bullpen maybe a long reliever but he's proven he can start what if that's all i gotta say here comes quas can't wait i blame little home run on the quas effect yes rob that's a good point momentum's a real thing guys if you tell me that momentum is not a thing in sports You're talking out of your ass. That's all I can say. Anytime you play a game or like, do you remember the feeling after those back-to-back -back hits that Quas gave up just liners? You were like, oh my God, here we go. The players are feeling that too. Momentum is a thing. So yes, Rob, Quas effect was in full effect. He was laughing at a different pitcher. I recall the player had a sexual misconduct or domestic issue, something along those lines. He, Bauer, saying, Matthew. Um, yep, Quas coming in next mop-up time. Uh, legit, my exact thoughts, says Ryan. Josue Cisneros says, Ben B has been pretty good. Robert says, I think we'll need Brown and Horton as starters. Here's Quas. 93 outside. Oh, he went around. Brown on the 8th and Cade in the ninth would be insane, but everyone wants starters. Over under three runs off of Quas. I'm taking over. <laughs> um, yeah, let's turn this audio back on here. I don't know. I might be, I might be crazy, but that's where I was. Barrel fouls went away. <laughs> Daniel Palencia, we go into hits, spring training, we want to like pigeonhole everyone in their positions, right? We want to say, well, Ben Brown is going to be a long reliever, and we want to say Javier Saad is going to be a fifth starter, and Kyle Hendricks is going to be a second starter. And we and we want to give them all these roles, but at the end of the day, it's 162-game series season, and it's going to be full of injuries and adjustments and all sorts of things that you don't expect. Both homered in that inning. And for up. that reason, things are going to change. We might see Cade Horton just could not do be a long reliever. We might see afternoon. Cade Horton be a starter. We might see Cade Horton be a setup man or a closer. We might see Jose Quas suddenly turn it on and be a legit bullpen guy. The odds of all those things, we don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. Just not going to happen. 3-2 from Quas. We pondered at the beginning of the I'm not sold on Alzali as much as I want to be, I says Ryan Williams. You know, no. I'm right there with you. Even when he had saved 20 games in a row last year, I was just kind of like, okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that wasn't even close. When he saved 20 games in a row last year, 
part of that was like, you know, it wasn't the Rod Beck effect. It wasn't like, you know, bases loaded, one out every single game. But it, there was traffic. And Tyler, he's down. never really been a high watch. strikeout guy. The slider, when it's sharp, is good. The fastball reached 98 a lot last year, so that was part of the reason why he was successful. You've really only seen about 96 out of him this year. So if those can get sharper, you like it, you don't love it. <laughs> Quas is awesome, it's says Rob German. Chris says, agree, Alzali isn't a closer on a good team, but I believe we have bigger pitching problems than that. Yeah, Alzali seems like more of a setup man, says Jake. I just don't believe Kyle Hendricks is our guy anymore, says two guys. I, yeah. We all wanted one more starter and one more bullpen guy. Did he want the and now we're, we're seeing the effect, going. right? But let's Defense let's be honest. Like good. all of us, Again, because it's, it's not our money, early, are just like go spend it. But let's let's be honest with the situation here for a so second, guys. About making errors. They this made team right now, according to Pakoda, now is is like an 81 so to 83 win sample team. size area, and your anticipation is that this will be. So, a, does that lead you to believe team, that we should? Far, they have not spend $25 million and go over the luxury the tax, hold, tax threshold is back for Jordan Montgomery, catch. who's and not going to throw so his first pitch until the end of yeah. April? Some of what no. we contemplate as bad if, pitching has if, actually been bad I'm going to mute the game for a second here. If this team was at 90 wins the way that it is, and then you say, hey, if we go out and spend $15 million on a reliever or $25 million on a starter, and that takes us to 93 to 95 wins, yeah, 100%. That's the time to spend. Quas just hit a guy. A walk, a hit by pitch, and a fly out. That was hit decently hard. He needs to go down to the minors. He needs to figure it out. Let's see. One of the questions I have is Hayden Wisniewski. How's he doing this year? I'm going to open that up. Let's look at that together. As that loads, right? That's why you don't see the Cubs going after a free agent signing like that. This is taking a long time to load. Now, Kyle Hendricks is going to be off the payroll next year, right? So you're going to lose that. Um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of anyone else. You're not going to have Hector Neris probably on the payroll. So at that point, when this is now a little bit clearer, and you have a, oh my, Jose Quas. Tatis with a single makes it 10-2. Who said that Quas is going to give up three runs, plus or minus? You might be right. You might be right. Um, yeah, so to me, we can sit here and say, well, they should have got another starter. They should have got another bullpen guy. But at the end of the day, they don't have the budget. And nor should they spend the money right now. Because if you go and get a guy like Jordan Montgomery – and let's just say he hurts himself in the second game of the year, and now you've exceeded the threshold, the tax threshold, plus you've spent all the money that you could have spent, and you are no better than you were than before the signing, That that's a tough thing to live with. Now, if the Cubs, through 90 games, have won 50 of them, they're 50 and 40, come the trade deadline. Now you go and you spend that money. Now you go and you say, hey, we'll, we'll trade you for Emmanuel Classe. And, but, I mean, he's got a very small salary, so that, that was going to be a good one either way. Uh, you go and you trade for a guy that you can take over some of his salary because it makes more sense because you're in the middle of a playoff push and this takes you to the next level. 
look at the Mets, look at the Angels, look at the Padres. They all did the things that Cubs Twitter is screaming to do, and how well is that going for them? The Mets last year overspent. The Padres last year overspent. The Angels at the break overspent. The Angels are screwed for the next five years. They had the chance to to trade away Shohei Otani before he got injured and get an entire farm system worth it. They they could have gone from middle-of-the-pack farm system to probably number one or number two. That's how much value Shohei Otani would have brought for prospects. Instead, they went and added guys like Lucas Giolito that killed them. Um, I'm trying to think of who else they added. I can't think of it right now, but they went for it, right? They went for it, and it did not work out. Jose Quas only gave up one run. If you took the under, you are the winner. If you took the over, you are you are not there. All right, before we look at Hayden Wisniewski's stats, we do have one more question right now for the final question, and this is going to be the tiebreaker, Carl Peterson. Josue Cisneros, you both are in the lead with four points. Uh, Did someone else have three? I think that was it. It was both Carl and Josue tied at the top with four points. So the final question that we have for the Miguel Montero giveaway baseball is now up on your screen, and here it is. Miguel Montero was one of five 2016 players to speak at the Cubs convention this year. Name at least two of the remaining four. So if you can name two of four, you'll get one point. If you can name three of four, you'll get three, you'll get two points. And if you can name four of four, you'll get three points. This is the tiebreaker. So, by the way, Stephen Dunn, you've got two points. If you can get all four of these, you'll get three points. And if Josue and Carl don't get any, then you'll be the winner. All right? Five players from the 2016 team came and spoke at the Cubs convention on a panel. Name two of the four for one point, three of the four for two points, four of the four for three points. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time on this one. Meanwhile, while we are looking at that, I want to go back to the Hayden Wisniewski stats. Let's take a look. Um, How's he been doing in the minors? We want pitching. And Keegan Thompson, a lot of people have been talking about him. I mean, three runs in four in six innings. It's aight. Uh, Riley Thompson doing pretty well. Four games, seven innings, one run. Hayden Wisniewski, not so hot. Six and a third, three runs. Let's organize this by ERA and see who could come up. Again, we're looking for bullpen help. Oh, that didn't work. Why did that happen? Who could come in for some bullpen help? It's the top of the ninth, by the way. Cubs are down 10-2. Cody Bellinger has a 1-2 and count on him. Nearly got hit. Ugh, why? How do I undo that? Apparently this site doesn't work very well. Maybe team? Can we go back to team? Here, I'm going to close this out and see if reopening it helps. AAA stats. Open link. And Cody is out for the first out of the ninth. All right. Craig says Fowler, Zobris, Strope. Carl says Hendricks, Edwards, Zobrist. Got some answers coming in here. Um, Pitching, pitching, pitching. Who could help us in the pitching department? Maybe Keegan Thompson. 
doesn't really excite me. Riley Martin, Thomas Pannone. Thomas Pannone is looking pretty good. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. Uh, Love Lady, I didn't like that signing when it happened. Sanders looking decent, but he has some major control issues. Colton Brewer looked good in the spring training. He's got a 193 ERA and four and two thirds. Chris Clark doing pretty well, six and a third, 142 ERA. Brad Wick, hey, Brad Wick looking good. And, I mean, he, he had some good outings when he was not hurt and he was with the Cubs. I want to say that was like 21 or 22. Carl Edwards, two and uh, two-thirds of an inning so far, gave it one run. So maybe maybe Wick, maybe Wisniewski, maybe Colton Brewer, maybe Keegan Thompson, maybe Thomas Pannone. We'll see. All right. The answer. The answer to this question, and we'll look at who has some right answers. Here we go. The Five players that spoke at Cubs Con from the 2016 World Series team. Miguel Montero, Justin Grimm, who I met in the airport after that. Pretty cool. Ben Zobris, Pedro Strope, and Kyle Hendricks. If you got two of the four, not including Montero, you get one point. Oh, Morel, don't swing at that. That looks like last year, Morel. We're all winners, Kyle, says Matthew. <laughs> Who's your favorite player on the team, Jake? Uh, my favorite player is right now Morel, for sure. Um, it was Nico. Now it's Morel. Um, it doesn't, I'm not usually like a back and forth guy. I just, I mean, Morel is my favorite, my wife's favorite. She got to meet him. He got to, to kiss the baby. He got to autograph a ball. Um, I really like Morel and we got to know Freddie, his interpreter pretty well. And just hearing all the, the things about Freddie, uh, or about Morel from Freddie are pretty cool. Morel, 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 Morel says Ryan Williams. Uh, what brought, bothers me? Okay, I'm just looking for answers right now. Here we go. Stephen Dunn, Ben Zobers, Pedro Strope, Justin Grimm, Kyle Hendricks. Stephen, coming in clutch. You just got three points, Stephen. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay, Carl got two of the four, so Carl got one point. Both Carl and Stephen are tied with five. Josue, are you here? Are you here, brother? Oh, my. We have a fight to the death. With Steven and Carl. Oh, I did not think we would end in a tie. So, here's what I'm going to do. You guys both win. Sorry, Josue. I don't know where you went, man. You had a commanding lead. You had an absolutely commanding lead. All right. Steven, if you're down for it, since Carl had the lead, we're kinda, we're going to kind of treat this like... Uh, well, let's see for a second. Carl, did you end up adding any other players there? No. No, you didn't. Okay. So, Steven had five points. Carl had five points. Because Carl had the lead before, we're going to treat that like he was on the base before Steven. So, it's whoever occupied the base before that is who stays there. But, Steven, I'm going to get you another autograph, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some options. Okay? If that If that sounds fair to you, I think that's the way I'd like to do it. If that doesn't sound fair, let me know. But Carl, uh, with him having a lead for most of the game um, and Steven coming in at the last minute, that's where I think I want to go with it, just so I can get you both a an autograph. Drop from the famous hat, says Matthew. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of why I want I, – I don't want to do a drawing and be like, oh, no, only one of you won. I, I'd like to give you both an autograph ball. So let me know, um, Stephen. That's totally fair. I did get very lucky in the winning the Matt Shaw ball. Congrats to, to him. Cool. I'm glad you're cool with that, Stephen. Okay, so uh, Carl, let me make sure that I've got your information. I know I have Stevens. Carl, if you're on um, Instagram or um, Instagram or Twitter, you can just DM me as well. But I want to make sure that I see you signed up on our list, that is not a strike to Dansby Swanson. That is an umpire that just wants to get home. Guys, this has been fun. Even though it was a 10-2 to loss, which is what it looks like it's going to end up being, 
this was fun. I'm glad you all joined me. I appreciate you all joining me. And there it is. Strike number two. I thought that was strike three. All right, 0-2 to Dansby. A little ground ball to third, and that is probably going to do it. All right, Cubs lose 10-2. They lose the series. Should have won the series had the Monday game not happened, but hey, shoulda, coulda, woulda, and that unfortunately is not how we live in this world. So Cubs lose 10-2. Carl Anderson or Carl Peterson is our winner for the Miguel Montero giveaway. Carl, congratulations. And in second place, tied for second, I should say, is Steven. So we're going to go ahead and do it that way. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we'll see you on Friday, right? Friday, we'll be doing this again with Brendan Miller, the pitch doctor, coming in from the CHGO podcast to kick us off on the first game with the Mariners. Peace, everyone. Thank you so much for joining.